Shut up, fool! Hey, Creek, how are you? What are you doing here? We just talked yesterday. We did. Um, so, you remember talking to Rick? Yeah. Well, I think I can make his argument for him a little better. But that if has to do like. with politics. This is Theist Thursday. Does it have to do with theism? Um, sort of. By the way, I don't... For those very who quick, don't, very for quick. The, for those of you who don't know, I talked to a guy named Rick yesterday and I demolished him. Right? You did. Yeah. Poor guy. Yeah. He was retired. So really quickly, <laughs> really quickly. Um, so I think it's when you say cheeky things like, oh, the leftists aren't going to like that. Or, oh, like as if the people in your audience aren't, you know, already pretty sympathetic to your point of view. They're listening after all. Well, I'm still calling, calling the herd. <laughs> but I, I think I think when you say cheeky things like that, or that's going to trigger lots of people. Like, come on, dog. Like, I know leftists like the back of my glorious naked body. I mean, sure, if some like prominent public figure said it, but it's you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So it's my channel. I can say what I want to say, right? And you do, but you don't say that about. The, uh, about religious topics. You don't say, oh, I bet oh, that's yeah, really going to trigger the Pentecostals. Well, not lately. Well, that's because I'm bored of theism. Oh, yeah, fair enough. That's what I think. I think. Like, if, really, if we, I should be paid. I, I should be paid to do this right now. Like, if you're good you? at. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, if you're good at something, why do it for free? If you guys want Theist Thursday, Thursday to continue, maybe I should say, you got to start paying me. There you go. Minimum, minimum I'd rather donation do other things. for the calls. I'd rather do other things. Like, I, I was being serious. I think theism is irrelevant to most, to me and a well, lot of atheists. Not for your, not, not for your eternal destiny, Doug. Well, you know that's not real. <laughs> well, I know that you think you know that it's not real. Anyway. I'll um, give you a hundred so bucks if hell's real. Okay. Deal? Are you going to put me in your will or something? Uh, I mean, <laughs> well, if hell's real, we're both going there, right? Because you're you're not a yeah. Good, you, yeah. you have you've rejected. No, I'm going to hell. No, no, I'm going to hell because I blasphemed against the Holy Spirit as an atheist. Yeah. So in hell, I'll give you a hundred bucks yeah. if it's real, and if oh, if, fair you know, enough. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'll. Uh... Is that okay, Satan? Satan says that. That he, you can have my spot. I got a real nice spot. Oh, you, I say the word Satan and you get scared. Is that, is that what's going on? You hide Sorry, your... I had to adjust my... Yeah, you had to hide your face as soon as I mentioned Satan's name. Anyhow, so you're basically saying I should be less cheeky. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying I, that I think what he is trying to, to say, maybe... Other, if he's not a complete idiot, um, is is that you're cheeky with the politics stuff in the, in the like I don't know um, in a not so subtle way I guess, but you're not with the religious stuff. You're not going to say, "Oh, I'm really going to trigger the Muslims," or "I'm really going to trigger the Pentecostals," or "I'm really going to." You, you don't do that, and it's fine. You do you. Um, but yeah, I was just trying to make his argument for him. I'm not saying you should do anything differently. Um, you know. Yeah, I might not. You're use welcome, that, Rick. I'm, I might not use that terminology trigger with um, theists, but I will say things that I know bothers them. Well, you can quote unquote trigger them because they already know that most people are going to hell. You know, they already know that most of the world disagrees with them. At least the ones who come online and call these shows, or you know, uh, okay, fair enough. That's why I'm saying you don't have to do anything differently. I think, but I think there is 
kind of a, a two a, a two tiered standard that you seem to apply to the politics stuff. I kinda... totally disagree with that. Fair enough. People just say that because they don't like what I say on certain things and like other things. I mean, if if I were to guess, I'd say that was his motivation, of course. But but I think if a critique had to be made, there it is. It's not it's not a big deal. It's just an observation I've made. But again, you do you. I'm not saying do it differently. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course I'll do me because I have no other choice. <laughs> I'm not going to do you. <laughs> no thanks. That's against Leviticus. <laughs> and God, I'll do me and I'll do my wife. There we go. There that, you go. Even that didn't sound good, right? <laughs> why, why don't you go find me some real Christians and bring them back here, or Muslims, or Jews, or whatever? Go, go out in the um, internet well, and find. But you them. only want to talk to precepts because they're the most honest about their religion. Sure, bring me Darth Dawkins. I don't care. Well, I don't think he'll be turning up. Um, at least not showing his face. I don't think he'll show his face again. Yeah. He's about exactly what I thought he would look like. He's an old man. Who cares? You know? Like, who yeah, cares who, how he looks? Who cares about people us? Focus on, <laughs> people focus on his personality instead of the, the arguments. And I think he's a rock-solid theologian, but... What? You know... You think Darth kind of Dawkins picture. is a rock solid theologian? Oh yeah. In terms of the, are you feeling like, okay? <laughs> well, he was able to get me to, to confront the fact that as an atheist, I had no grounds for intelligibility. We've been through this. That's not the real reason you became a Christian, or tried to become a Christian. Uh, well, the Holy Spirit was, but if you ask me, like, what, um, what was the impetus that the Holy Spirit used to convert me? It was, yeah, it was arguing with theists online, and it was realizing that I had no grounds to justify my atheism. Do you really believe that? Yes. Do you really believe the Holy Spirit's real? I have to, through, through again, the presupposition. No, no, argument. no. If you have to, then you really don't believe it. See? You don't really believe like, it. Well, no, I believe it through entailments. You really don't believe it. I believe it through entailments. Like, you believe, like, you have political beliefs, right? Like, you, you clearly believe through entailments that the, you know, that the principles of conservatism are true. I, I'm talking that, about the existence that. of something. Like, I, I, I believe this pen, pen exists. I really do. Do you believe the Holy Spirit exists? Mm -hmm. Yes, I really do. You really do. Okay. Because if the Holy Spirit, again, if the Holy Spirit didn't exist, then God wouldn't be the way he is. God isn't the way he is. We wouldn't have intelligibility. Yeah. Yeah, I disagree yeah. with that. Do you know why I disagree well, with that? Because you want to sin and suppress <laughs> the truth and unrighteousness. What's my presupposition? Um that you're your own god no you haven't even begun to, th to to think about people who disagree with you and what they would say you don't know what my presuppositions are well that uh that water soaked napkin is not going to catch on fire no. that uh that pen is going to drop when you when you when you let go of it well <laughs> you often say that watch this your presupposition is that God is the grounding for everything, basically, and that without God, there cannot be these preconditions for intelligibility, logic, laws of logic, uniformity of nature. God mm -hmm. is the foundation mm -hmm. for all of that, right? Correct. Yeah. See how I could, I can state what you believe very quickly in a nice, succinct manner. You have no idea what my presuppositions are. Well, you, when we have argued about this, you just kind of shrug your shoulders and say, No. Uh, my fundamental presuppositions are I've my I've been saying this for like, for 10 years. Like, what is my grounding for the preconditions for intelligibility? How, how do you think I would answer that? You have answered this, and I quote, my fundamental presuppositions. 
Okay. You don't go any baser than that. No, I have, but you just haven't heard it. So you ha can, can you guess what my fundamental presuppositions are? Just guess. Um, I can only guess troll answers, so I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna speculate. No, I'm. You you can only guess troll answers. You respect the presup argument, right? Naturally. Yeah. You ought to know other presuppositional worldviews. Well, your pre your precept is not God. Like, not God is the I know, grounds for intelligibility. Well, yeah, it's not God, but what do you, what is it? Um, uh, typically, non precepts have said the universe. Um, there you uh, go. So reality. What is the, the preconditions for intelligibility? The presupposition that the universe exists and has the properties that it has, including that that there's such thing as chemical evolution and biological evolution that would create a uh, highly oh, there's intelligent no evolution. that can create uh, intelligent animals like ourselves that can think and reason even though it's determined i still say it's we're thinking and we're reasoning yeah and what instantiates the universe uh it is a brute fact have you ever heard the uh, the old adage, a brute fact is a mute fact? What substantiates God? He's uh, self-substantiating, uh, self-authenticating. The universe is self-substantiating. Uh, no, no, universe is a contingent thing. It had a beginning. Nope. Atheists the universe say is, there was a the big universe, bang. The cosmos is I'm defining it. I'm not defining the universe meaning our reality only. I'm talking about all material reality, even what's prior to the Big Bang is a necessary entity it's a not contingent thing in its entirety there's things within it that are contingent so well, whatever you go, so whatever you say that you need from this god i can say na 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 i got it too in fact i'd say you're borrowing from my worldview you are borrowing from my worldview no it, you no, you. Because we share well, the pre we share the properly basic belief that the that there's this material reality around us. Yes. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to the universe. So my presupposition. Well, I mean, God literally. My presuppositions are God. more properly basic than yours because they're no, so they're not because oh yes they are. My God literally revealed how he did it, when he did it. I'll arm and wrestle what's you going for to happen it. if you don't believe it. <laughs> I'll arm wrestle, uh, and I'll win arm wrestle, and then therefore you'll have to admit. You, well, you did it. See, in, in my worldview, the universe exists. It's a brute, uh, non-contingent fact. And, um, and then the fact that we evolved, uh, granted, it's low probability. I call it a miracle that we evolved to be intelligent and reason like this. And us intelligent beings have reasoned that there must be this God out there who created everything because of I see design and all these other things. Anyhow, I'll let you go because now I got a real caller. <laughs> Patrick. Hello. Hello. What, what is the SZ? Is that your... Oh, I guess I can't ask that. Ah, it's okay. Uh, do you want me to ask you questions? Oh, I don't know. Um, sure, but... What's the uh, capital of South Dakota? Uh, it's not Sioux Falls. Nope. It is... If you answer correctly, you can stay. If you don't answer correctly, you have to go. Do you need a hint? you need to phone a friend? you need to Google? I used to know this. How can I have not... Bismarck is North Dakota. Correct. But... Yeah, and, uh, that's not what you asked. So starts with, P, starts with P. Starts with P. Yep. Under pressure, can't get it. P. 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 Pierre. Yes. <laughs> oh, you were watching the Crazy. live stream chat. <laughs> Okay, are you a Christian, Muslim, Jew, Hindu, pantheist? No, agnostic theist. Agnostic theist, okay. But pretty. In other, pretty in other words, you have no backbone. 
<laughs> um, no, I think I, I think I do have a backbone. I think I am uh, still convinced by some of the philosophical arguments, but they don't have much consequence because what's the difference between being an atheist and being a theist about a God you know nothing about? Good question. What is the difference? Nothing. I don't. I haven't seen much of a difference. Yeah, I'm trying to. Well, I've been trying. Yeah, I guess maybe the difference is you get uh, a little comfort from some um, faux explanations. So if you're yeah, a agnostic know. theist and someone like the previous caller says, "Where do you get the preconditions for intelligibility?" You can say God, right? I and I can't say that because I don't believe God exists. Correct. Yeah. Fair enough. Yes. I often wonder if, if um, when I get in discussions about whether there is such a thing as objective morality, if that's, I haven't worked through that one all, all yet. I haven't read Harris. There's a lot I need to read on, on morality. Would you call yourself an agnostic deist? Not really, because I would have to think if God exists, then he might get involved in the universe. But again, you have no idea how much or to what extent. Because I, I would say that from the short conversation, deist be a, like deist is a subset of theism, but it's more accurate of what you are. Because deist would say, yeah, non-personal God. Yeah, I thought about that. But what if it's a personal God? I don't know that it isn't. I mean, I, I don't imagine that it is. But If God was a personal God, if God existed and was personal, which religion do you think is correct in the world? None of them, I would guess. Good answer. But, you know, so like you, I was a Christian for a long time, and I, I thought at the time that that was the best explanation. But um, since I don't believe that anymore, like none of the other alternatives seem any better. In fact, they all seem worse. Which you said you're a theist because of philosophical arguments. Which is your go-to? Which is your favorite? Well, I do, I do appreciate the the cosmological argument as well as fine-tuning. Um, however, I don't find them compelling, like, this drives me to believe in a personal god that uh, it must be something like the monotheistic gods, but it does strike me as a possibility that it's more than arbitrary. I think, What's your right? default I'd... position that there are no gods unless there's evidence for it, or there is a God, unless there's evidence that there isn't? What's your default? Yeah, I've, I've thought about that. That's a really good question. Um, I would say closer to the, to the fact that, closer to the idea that there isn't in the sense that the human notion of God seems narrow if you are starting from nothing, right? What what else could be the notion of God? You know, some... Okay, you're going to be an Mormon, atheist in five minutes. The Mormon notion of God is, all, you know, ha is very different from the Christian notion of God. And Christians who haven't studied it are blown away when they try to... Patrick, if it. your default position is no gods exist unless there's evidence to say a God does... I lean in that way, but I'm not convinced. Right, but your default is that no gods exist unless you have some evidence for it. I'm not sure that's my default. Oh, you, I thought you just said that. You're, now you're going to. I back. said I lean that way. You lean that way. Yeah. Which means you're more likely to believe that than the default is God exists or gods exist. More likely, yeah. That's yeah. a good way to put it. Yeah. So, what would be good evidence? to sway you the other direction to say that, yeah, it's more likely a God does exist. Yeah, you would think there would have to be some kind of positive evidence of it. Yeah. Um, what do you think and uh, you not found? just evidence through culture, but, but um, you know, I, I really appreciate when I came to understand more about falsifiability, right? We should probably... If we believe something, we should consider it to be falsifiable in that if it wasn't true, there'd be a way to know that it wasn't true. There'd be a way to yep. have evidence. So, um, But you mentioned the cosmological argument as evidence for God. 
Uh, everything that begins to exist has a cause. The universe began yep. to exist. Therefore, the universe has a cause. And then yes. uh, 10 syllogisms later, there, therefore Jesus rose from the dead. <laughs> or Muhammad got the words yeah, from God. Whatever. Leaps in there, yeah. Yeah. Um, what if the cosmos never had a beginning? Yeah, that would change things. Yeah. So that argument kind of goes out the window, right? No, I, I tend to think the cosmos had a beginning, but I guess I don't know. Based on what? For sure. Um, well, time had a beginning. Our time had a beginning, yeah. Yeah. And so outside of our time and our space, we don't really know what it, what could exist. At least I don't. Right. Some have theorized. I, I find the multiverse... So if you don't know, the default goes back to... So if you don't know outside our reality, like our universe had a beginning, most physicists believe, but that says nothing about uh, anything else outside our reality. Right. So and, and if we and if you're if you say I don't know, and yes. your default and if you lean your default position as no gods exist unless you have evidence evidence for it, then the cosmological argument goes poof. And you're back I'm not to, sure if that should and, be. And, and you're back to and you're back to your what you lean towards your default position is no gods exist, which makes you leaning towards atheism. With lots of uncertainty, yeah. Yeah. So you're an agnostic atheist. Welcome to the club. Uh how much uncertainty negates your uh your categorization there, right? Like well, hang obviously on. you can be an atheist that's ninety nine percent certain, but what if you're only sixty percent certain or who knows? You're, Isn't there a point where there's enough uncertainty that you shouldn't claim that category? Okay, yeah. You, you ask an interesting question. At what point do you say your confidence is too low to say you have knowledge about it? I say yes. 95%. Nine, may, well, maybe even... No, 95%. It's good in statistics. You know, confidence level, 0 0.05, yeah. 95% confidence in, intervals. Um. If you're 95% confident in something for re good, reliable reasons, I think you can say you know it. Yeah, and then it's hard to put a finger on what these numbers actually mean. But but just taking it at face value, I yeah, I think I'm not close to 95%. So you're close to 60. Maybe, yeah. Okay. For a subjective, intuitive notion of 60. <laughs> You're a sixty percent atheist, then. Yeah, I can buy that. Okay. Not that it matters, but right. That's what. But I'm I got a quota to meet. Reasons. Satan's in the corner there, and yeah. like, if you say at least you're sixty percent atheist, I get a bonus check at the end of the month. Okay, so what what percentage are you at? Ninety nine point five. Okay, and then, how many years ago were you a Christian? Oh, 18? It's been a long time already. Okay. And how, what, what would that number be at when you were a Christian? Like 1% or 0.01%? That there's no God? That, no, the same, same confidence that there's no God, yeah. Uh, yeah, probably 0.05%. Yeah, so, so Wiley swang from very close to one pole to the other for you. Yeah. Can you think back... How how long did it take to swing? Were there times when you were in the middle? Does that even matter? Yeah, it probably fluctuated during my lifetime, but um, the real polar swing took place over about five years. Over five years' time? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So um, since it's been more years for you than for me, how have you been able to manage your personal relationships with Christians that you've cared to keep? By not being a dick. Yeah. Well, that's kind of important no matter what you are. But <laughs> um, is there any. I actually think Christians like me that... more than atheists do. Okay. Because I am a nice guy. Yeah. But um, I think a lot of atheists have sticks up their butt. And they think they need need to prove that Christianity is false or well, yeah, especially in the United States, it's all about Christianity. Like they, so many atheists are just anal about it. Mm -hmm. I used to be anal about it, but oh, I grew, really, I grew out of it. 
Um, and so, uh, I mean, is there anything more concrete? I'd love to hear more about like, oh, because, because I did X and Y, therefore this person, I was able to be better friends than even before. I don't know if there's anything that strikes you as, as more specific that you could share. Cause, um, that's of great interest to me. Uh, if you let people know that you're not trying to evangelize, like I, I was joking with you before about Satan and, you know, of course. make you an atheist, mm -hmm. but if you let people know that you have no desire to change them, mm -hmm. uh, in most cases, of course, there's always exceptions. Like if you're a serial killer because you think God told you to kill people, then yeah, I want to change you. But most of the time, you know, you stay the way you, you are. I say that to my wife. Um, I think Christians then are at ease that, oh, here's an atheist who is not proselytizing. Okay, so make it explicit that you're not going to try to deconvert them. Okay. Yeah. I, and again, I used to be different. But now, um, yeah, now I don't. If you want to stay a Christian, stay a Christian. My, my biggest thing is that if you're a Christian in the United States who's struggling with cognitive dissonance, and fear and just every day you wake up and you don't feel good because you just are, you feel like you're forcing yourself to believe this stuff. I'm here to help. I'm here to say it's okay to let it go. There's probably no hell. Uh, when you die, you won't know anything. I mean, that'll be it. You can still have meaning and purpose in your life without God. You can still be a moral person. You can even still ground your morals in different concepts other than God. You'll be fine. So I'm here to help those people who are struggling. Yeah, in those conversations, it seems like it. I can get that point across pretty well, or at least something like it, and it goes well. But once we get down to like the actual disagreement, point of disagreement, it's almost like I see the point where the conversation turns, turns from here, we're trying to figure this out together. We're trying to maybe debate a little, but mostly struggle together. And then it turns and like, except, yep, that's my identity. I can't go against it. Right? Like, yeah. like oh, but, but sins in the world, we have to deal with sin. And I can't accept anything other than there's got to be a way to deal with sin. Might be one go-to point. And it's, to me, I hear, yep, my identity is I'm a Christian and I can't imagine life still living in my sins so therefore i need jesus so therefore i'm a christian so therefore you know my my whole identity is here and you can't break through that no matter what other things we agree on strongly yep and my advice is just let them have yeah. their identity in christ if they want it what's the downside the downside is that i see that that identity growing to encompass more and more things i'm a christian oh i'm a republican too oh i i used to think that this, too against that and... and this is part of the reason why i'm more interested in politics because that's when the rubber hits the road but you can have christians for example all over the political map oh yeah yeah and it's not it could be any it could be it could be the the liberal christian that feels the same way and like like you can you have christians who say gay marriage is a sin and you're going to hell if you do it and you got other Christians saying, oh, I love the gays. Give me a hug and a kiss. I mean. Yeah, not loving them would be an aff affront to my identity. <laughs> yeah, like did you see the so Super Bowl commercial about washing of, of feet? Yes. Like that commercial was very polarizing in the evangelical Christian world. Mm -hmm. Because and it was a very clever commercial. Because it was definitely, my confidence is sky high that it was put together by progressive Christians um, to promote inc inclusivity and tolerance and all these great buzzwords. Uh, and they use like fundamentalist type Christianity um, word pictures to get that point across of Jesus washing feet. So it's fun yeah, to, fun to yeah, watch the he, Christians fight about it. Did you look into He Gets Us, that the group that makes those ads? Did I what? Did you look into He Gets Us, the group that makes those ads? No, no, no. 
I didn't. Okay. I'm, but I'm still confident it was put together by progressive Christians. Am I wrong? I think they're conservative Christians, but who are more focused on Christianity more than the politics of it. I um, don't believe it, but I'll. So if you, what, one of their well, some of their donors are secret, but one of them is the estate of the guy that uh, ran Hobby Lobby. Right, a big, big portion of his estate went to fund He Gets Us. Yeah, I, I seem to remember reading something about Hobby Lobby, uh, the CEO or the family, thinking that they were very conservative. And then, I don't know, a year ago, reading something about them and thinking, oh, maybe they're not. So Yeah, not politically conservative, but not necessarily politically liberal either. Okay. Right down so, the middle. So anyway, yeah, I don't know if they're down the middle politically or just apolitical. Or like they want to get away from, they want to make it non-political. Anyway, I'm getting into speculation. We don't need to do that too much. But um, so, what's the real but, reason you called in today? Is it just to well, just because just, just the chat? Yeah, and I'm interested. I'm just interested in in you know continuing to live my life with other theists. I should say with with theists um, in a constructive way. Would you have bad also, relationships now? No. No, but I did when I stopped being a Christian, I did lose touch with a lot of people that I thought were friends. That's normal though. Yeah, I guess so. Because when you Probably have that way with any organization. When right? you have worldviews that diverge, I mean it's just normal that you have less in common on a lot of things and like you don't go to church groups anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. it makes me think with my friends I need to actually be friends not just co-interested in one thing that we share. You know, I want to be a genuine friend to someone. Um, How many close friends do you have right now? Oh, not a lot, you know. What was the one study? You can you can know 100 people, you can be friends with 10, authentically speaking, only. I'm trying to remember who put out that sociology study. Because I'm happy with one, two, or three. Yeah. I don't need a bunch of friends. Usually they're more trouble than they're worth. <laughs> Can you help me move? <laughs> I like having helping people move. Well, you're a nicer guy than me. I, at my age, I mean, you throw out your back. Uh, my age. At my age, that I'm trying to avoid. You're 42. Age. I'm guessing 40, you're 44. Oh, that was cool. See, I, I complimented you. Yet I was close. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, and yeah, so that's why I call in. Also, I'm always interested in, in, in talking and we don't have to explore it all in one call, but, um, just, you know, my wife's Christian like yours and want to. What type of Christian is she? Going. <laughs> Pretty moderate. Uh, she, after I left the church, she changed over to be Anglican. Oh, okay. but not. Yeah. So not she's, she's not really a Christian anymore, then. <laughs> no, no, not Episcopalian, not liberal, but the conservative Anglicans. Yeah, I don't know if you're aware of the structure oh. of the Anglican community. Yeah, I know that most mainline denominations have branches, like the Presbyterians have more of a. Yeah, she's not a main, not in a mainline denomination. Okay. Does she, does she believe in eternal conscious tor torment? She's unsure about that one. She leans towards yes. Okay. And so therefore she leans towards having a bit of uh, emotional angst that you're going there. Yeah, but she hides it well. Well, she probably trusts God. That you're going to come back to Christianity before you die. I think she has enough uncertainty that she doesn't blame me for not believing it, which is really gracious of her. I'm very much appreciative of that. So it sounds like your marriage is good. Sounds like you got friends. So really, huh, yeah. so really, you got no problems. Thank you. you. Yes. Yeah, it's, you got life's good. You got no need to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, emotional support. You want emotional support from me? <laughs> no, you don't. Not really, but, um, but yes, just uh, I I love. I love talking about these things because I don't think it's so simple as to just, let's just argue about how atheism is right all the time. Um, getting, maybe you're bored with the theism and I'm bored with the atheism. 
I'm bored with atheism too. Like, yeah, okay. to me, they're... I kind of figured maybe you were. Yeah, like there is no identity in atheism. Right. Right. You've talked about that before in your other videos, where atheists there are Republican atheists and Democrat atheists. There are every dichotomy of atheists. So. Yep. Smart atheists, stupid atheists. Yeah, it makes me think about, um, you know, what could we do with Christians that can make us both better if we set some of these concerns aside? And I wonder, do you think being more academic is worthwhile as a goal? Like to be less glib and less populist and less Depends what your goal is. And more academic just to make relations better and as a default no it's not a, a better thing i'd say most people are not academic types right and that's what i wonder if if that were better would like if we can wrestle with an idea intellectually is that well you can wrestle well today? to me intellectual and academic are two separate terms um yeah I, not be using the right I, one, I, I've been around academics a big chunk of my life. And a lot of them are complete dunces. And, and let me explore that a little bit, little bit. Because they they wrestle with intellectual issues, but they do it in a way that's inauthentic? Or try no, to um, they would be dunces yet successful academically? No, usually, like, for example, I used to teach uh, pre-med students... Um, who actually did become doctors, a lot of them were just good memorizers. That's it. But if they actually had to problem solve and think through things without having a protocol in front of them or a, or a, a textbook to refer to, if they actually had to think on their own, they couldn't. And they... And, and people trust them for medical advice. I mean... <laughs> so So in other words, they're just adhering to the narrow system that they are familiar with more so than actually developing the mind and yeah if you like uh you to me really the term intellectual is someone who can actually think outside the box who can actually say okay 99 out of 100 people believe this i'm going to try to figure out how they all could be wrong that's the scientific method basically is questioning everything um not assuming uh anything um like really diving deep into how could this be wrong falsifying things yeah there's a movie uh what was that movie with brad pitt it was, uh, it was a zombie movie was it called zombie no world war z world war z and this this country of israel uh, saw these that this, this would happen and zombies would be a thing and so they actually built walls way ahead of time and uh, Brad Pitt's character asked him how did you know and he said uh, well we have a rule in Israel that if everybody thinks the same way we basically hire one person to purposely think the opposite and try to the falsify yeah to falsify everybody else and it was the one time where this guy was right. And um, yeah. And so. that was also in Minority Report, similar concept. Yeah. So I think like the best scientists that have ever lived have been like that. It's just telling them apart from the hundred other crackpots that think they're like that. And I could, I could easily convert this into a political discussion, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> But in politics, I mean, it's it just, well, the consensus says this, so it must be true. I mean, uh, the intellect, the intelligentsia. Uh, yeah, but anyhow, don't get me started on that. Yeah, that's interesting. So there's a, there's a difference between thinking for yourself versus coming up with an idea that's not well-grounded and claiming that you're thinking for yourself. But really, you haven't checked it enough. You don't have the intellectual humility to see why you might be wrong. Yeah. Are you leaning towards that the conversations between believers and non-believers should be more intellectual? 
Maybe because it seems like they're getting less and less so. I don't know if that's going to help though, right? Yeah, the, the problem with uh, you're basically diving into the world of philosophy at that point because there's yeah. no demonstrable evidence for God, right? Well, actually, I take that back. I currently believe there's no demonstrable evidence for God, uh, but I can be very easily changed. Um, and so if you're having intellectual conversations about God, you're... You're talking about philosophy, you're talking about the theological arguments, the ontological arguments, and so forth. And to me, this is like creating God out of thin air through words. Better than creating him out of the Bible? Maybe? Um, like if we have good It premises. depends. It depends. No, I actually... Yeah. I know where you're going with this, but I I think that if the Bible were to make predictions, I, and I think all the prophecies in the Bible are bunk, but if I can imagine the Bible actually being better than philosophical arguments, if it said in Genesis, um, a man will be born, and that will start the calendar at zero, roughly, and then in roughly the year 2024, uh yeah and then it names a specific things that they figure. didn't know beforehand yeah they like could, yeah 2000 there are eight there are eight major planets joseph biden will be president of the united states yeah. and nobody will know what's the united states what's the word biden i mean yeah. but you know you put those words together and um it would be really hard to uh to <laughs> to make that type of prediction and have it come true yes i think that's that's something a lot of Christians don't really consider that uh, the Bible could be so much more specific and telling of who God is if he's really true. Or if the Bible, the Bible said things like, like the Bible does so say better. things, <laughs> the, the Bible does, New Testament says things like, you will do greater things than me, and Jesus speaking, and Jesus did a lot of great things. And, and you actually see that. You actually yeah, see... Right. Christians going to gravesides and raising the dead. Being critical about what the Bible does say about the future leads you to doubt the Bible. But if you're not critical, if you're just saying, yeah, we are doing greater things because we have the Holy Spirit and we, da 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 da, you know, it's, it's very easy to uh, make it a just so story. Well, yeah, if greater things, if it means Jesus did great things like walk on water, calm the waves, yeah. the storms, raise the dead, if people did that and even bigger things and the bible said that i would say the bible has way more power than philosophical arguments but christians will claim that that's true in a manner of speaking right in in a definition that yeah in fits um, there. in very okay. remote areas of africa where there's no smartphones and no verification like what what uh, this god needs to do if it, if it is real is say next week thursday three o'clock eastern in New Jersey, I will be there, and I will do this miracle. Bring all your cameras, all your testing equipment. Get ready, because we're about to rumble. I mean, this is what this God should do if it wants, if, if, yeah. if it wants people to have demonstrable evidence. Yeah, and the Christian will say, well, the Bible addresses that. It says... You know, even if they, they have Moses and the prophets, they will not even believe if a man returns from the dead. Um, yeah, and then the Gospel of John uses the, not, another Lazarus story to say that's not yeah. true because even the hard-hearted Jews believed uh, in Jesus after he ra rose Lazarus from the dead. Right, right. So, um, but I agree with you in that if, we're, if we set that aside and we think about what, how could we actually prove a true rel religion to be true, with these ideas come to mind, and yet people in those religions aren't interested in those ideas. Even, even no, if they, they are, can. they are, but well, they're apologists, yes. But, but in the end, it comes down to the kind of proof that a skeptic wants is not available, right? But I actually think deep down they want the same evidence I do, yeah, that's true. They just don't have enough faith to believe it will happen. 
which is a great segue for my Pentecostal friend to jump in now. <laughs> Anyhow, Patrick, I'll let you go. All right, thank you. Yep, have a good day. Have a good one. Thank you. Okay, Pentecostal friend, you said you'd uh, come on yesterday. I bet anybody can call in. The Bible should include an algorithm for predicting random events like meteor strikes, slower lightning strikes. Yeah, good one, Bacon. The Bible said uh, in the year 20... Uh, what year did Mount St. Helens erupt? Oh, is that in the 80s? Whatever year that was. Let's say it was 87. No, it was before then, right? 85? If the Bible predicted that... That'd be cool. When did Mount St. Helens erupt? Okay, I'm going to guess 85. 80? Wow, May 18th, 1980. I remember that. I was in Manitoba, and the whole sky went dark. And Manitoba is close to 2,000 miles away. Maybe 1,500 miles away from Mount St. Helens. What's that, uh, where, where's that Pentecostal guy? Did he leave? I asked him to come on. Did he re Uh, I'm a Pentecostal. Pine Creek likely, yes. Good. Let me get something ready. I'll use the restroom, and uh, when I'm done with the restroom, you can be here. But let me get a video ready to watch. All my shorts are political, so I can't play that. Let's see here. Oh, let's play James White. We were talking about Christian faith. We were talking about precepts. Everybody loves James White, right? I mean, he has such a nice shiny head. I have no idea what this video is about. I made it um, one month ago, and I don't remember. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll be back in uh, two minutes, maybe three. Christian faith shared as a common belief, something that you and I must admit sounds absolutely insane to the secular mind. See, there's, there's a foolishness to what we believe. It's, it's crazy. Like if anybody ever says it back to you, you, ha you know the Holy Spirit's done a work in your life. Doesn't it? What is this saying? What are we saying to the world? We are literally saying to the world that the one who created all things, that holds all things together, a hundred billion stars in our own galaxy, a hundred billion galaxies, the one who, in whom all things hold together entered into his own creation on a little pale blue dot around a standard star like if someone says back to you, okay, so let me get this straight. A virgin gave birth to a guy who was God, but only part of God, but still completely God, but man also. And he wasn't even born in a important place, sort of the outback of the Roman empire. And that he lived a life where he didn't even write a book. And he chose 12 disciples and one of them betrayed him. 
And then he, he was crucified by the military power of the day. And then we say he rose again. They buried him and then he came back to life and then he floated back into heaven. And then one day, let me get, make sure I get all this right. One day he's coming back on a white horse. <laughs> to get us. And we actually proclaim that this is our creator and our maker. That's what you believe, partner? <laughs> What's our response? Mm-hmm. Me too. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah, I do. You want to come? You want to go with me? We're going to meet him in the air. Let's like the, the style difference between these two pastors is amazing. Let's agree on one thing, shall we? That's crazy from the world's perspective. Yeah, it is. And it always will be. Yep. As Paul said, the preaching of the cross is to them that are perishing foolishness. Yeah. And so he's quoting scripture, but he's, I would say, actually even proud to say that. He's proud to be viewed as foolish from the world's point of view. You got to respect that, right? I respect that. I respect someone saying, all you people think I'm crazy and I don't care. You got to respect that at least a little bit. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, the dog father. Okay, Pentecostal boy, I'm waiting for you. Pe Pentecostal man. Doug knows the Bible really well. He isn't convinced by it. Many aren't and more waking up. Well, I used to read the Bible every day, but since I got bored of it, I haven't in a while. So I, I've known a lot more about it in the past than I do now, probably. But I know the important stuff. Do you want me to share the gospel to you, Whistler? <laughs> okay, room's open. You can call in and talk about whatever you want. You can call in uh, as long as it's about theism. Or if you want to call in and just have me guide and direct and manipulate the situation, I can do that. If you want to call in and not defend your faith at all, but just ask me questions about what I believe, that's fine. No pressure. Was I a good Christian back in the day? Of course I was a good Christian. I was a virgin before I got married. Never did no drugs. Although I tried cigars and I maybe had a few cans of beer before I was 18. But. But I was a good boy, good, stable, young Mennonite boy with a high degree of self-control. There's a um, debate between me and my mother about whether I'm circumcised. <laughs> she goes, we didn't circumcise you, son. I said, I'm circumcised. No, you're not. No, I am. But I wasn't about to show her. There's a guy named Kenny who wants on. 
is Kenny the, the Pentecostal? Or is Kenny the guy I banned for being a false prophet? False prophet. <laughs> and there he goes. <laughs> Kenny, no. I'm a man of my word. I said you were gone. You're gone. Oh, let me trigger uh, the Christians. <laughs> like Kenny. <laughs> um, I was a true believer. I really experienced the Holy Spirit. And then I rejected it, realizing that it was all make-believe. There, now Kenny's triggered. No, I have no use for Kenny. Sorry. I'd rather talk to the Pentecostal. The preacher guy was here before? To be honest, I'd rather talk to somebody I've never talked to before. Doug met his match. That's the problem. See, this is Kenny. That's, that's him. So if you've never called in, but you kind of wanted to, here's your chance. Room's open. And I'm totally comfortable in who I am, and I'm totally comfortable with having dead air. Doesn't make a dent to my psyche. I'll put up the comments. Keep you guys in line. I always find it interesting that it's, the default is kind of fuzzy. I gotta sharpen it up. If you have called in before and your name isn't Kenny, you can call in. I'm just saying I prefer to talk to new people. I actually prefer to talk to, I have, it's been a long, long time since I've talked to a woman. A real woman. I've talked to some trans women, but they're actually men. But I want to talk to a real Muslim woman or Christian woman. Muslim women are interesting to talk to. If you're a Muslim woman listening from Saudi Arabia right now, please call in. That would be fun. If you're a Jewish woman listening right now, living in Israel, please call in. I beg you. That would be fun to talk to you. And you can talk to me. If you are a Hindu woman with the dot right here, please call in. I like dots. Who have I missed? Yeah, Christian women. Oh, I gotta go, not top chat, but live chat. Not everyone in Israel is a Jew. Well, they should be. If you live in Israel and you're not a Jew, you're taking up space for real Jews. So there. I, I tell you, the Jews love me. 
You know, hey, that that atheist gets me. Yeah. <laughs> no, there are some Muslims living in Israel. I didn't scare most theists away. Um, problem is, I don't have emotional meltdowns like Matt Delahunty, and that's what people tune in to see. Plus, I'll say things like, trans women are not real women, and so then that gets two-thirds of atheists away. But that's okay. You want to talk about schooling more? Homeschooling? Why would you pay to see me talk to Jay Dyer? I really dislike tag philosophical talk. I, I really summarized. I, I can summarize Jay Dyer's position in probably 60 seconds. I hope he can do the same for me. And we can agree to disagree and say bye. I mean, he did change his hairstyle, Jay Dyer. I like it. He looks more like a, like a skateboarder now. He's like cool with the kids now. Good for you, Jay. I think Jay Dyer looks like the type of guy who would now say, That's gnarly, dude. Totally rad, man. Not going to bite? Bite on what? Just say they're men? What, trans women? Yeah, they are men. And trans men are women. Facts? What? Theism. Theist Thursday. Don't get me started on politics. Okay, uh, Doug, did you say okay if a Christian woman comes on? Yeah, but you wanted to come on too, so... What, do you want your, your wife to come with you? Hop in. I'll do a threesome. Oh, now your wife's not going to want to come on. Yeah, gnarly. 80s. I gotta love the 80s. For all you people who never lived through the 80s, you messed up. You know, you watched the, the show Stranger Things. I lived that. Not the monsters, but the, the shag carpet. We were watching an episode of Stranger Things, me and the kids, and uh, there was a scene where someone's barefoot going through the sh on the shag carpet. I go, I know exactly how that feels. It's a good feeling. My question is, if pregnancy wasn't an issue, should incest be considered bad? There's other issues like um, other pain and suffering issues. But if you're saying all consequences of incest are all negative consequences of incest is bad, is incest bad? I I lean consequentialist, so I'd say no. There's still the problem of we evolved, um, so you'd almost have to be a freak of nature to not feel bad doing incest. 
the Christians would call that your conscience uh, that God put on your heart. I would say we evolved to like have this icky factor of having sex with your sister. It's a bit of a gotcha that people um, put forth, but I don't care. I take my own medicine. I walk right into the trap, have it snap closed, and smile. Why do people leave Canada? Well, because it's cold. But so is North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, Montana. I mean, most areas, even Colorado, can get really cold. Let's go, Christian women. Hop in. If you want to talk to a real man, you hop in. I'm not saying your husband's not a real man, but he might not be. Why is the irreducible complexity argument untenable? Because you can say things like brute facts. That's why. Well, I feel sorry, sorry for Christian men who are married to Christian women because they got to be almost like Jesus for their wives to really love them. I mean, dear, why can't you be more Christ-like? Because when I think of my husband as a Christian leader in the home, I think of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh, hang on. Jesus just texted me, I bet. Yep. Jesus says, you're doing a good job. Love your show. I got no complaints with Jesus. He's been always been nice to me. He's always always compliments me in my show. I'm texting him back right now. Thank you, Jesus, for your compliments. If I ever get cancer, please heal me. Say hi to Lucifer. There we go. You love your wife, but you wish your beliefs were closer. Yeah, I, I get you. I'm actually going out to dinner uh, tonight with my wife and all her Christian friends uh, the day after Valentine's supper thing. That'll be interesting. Be curious to see if they treat me different because they all know I'm an atheist. They're all going to be when it comes to praying for the meal, I bet you this is what's going to happen. Okay, let's say grace for the... And they're going to close their eyes and they're going to... One eye open looking at me. What's he going to do? I'll go like this while they're praying. <laughs> See if I can get a smile out of them. <laughs> Kenny would smile. Yeah, live stream it. No, that'd be rude.
there's huge advantages to dating a believer, a Christian, well, even a Muslim Jew rather than an atheist. If you're a man seeking a woman, there's advantages to, like, uh, if, um, how do I put this delicately? If, you, if you're a man and you're working and you come home and you're tired and your wife has had troubles that day and just needs to vent or whatever, if she's a Christian, she can actually take that to Jesus and save you some trouble. And you think that doesn't work, but the placebo effect is quite strong. If a woman truly believes that Jesus has heard her, heard her, her sufferings for the day, there's a little less burden on the man to hear it. <laughs> oh, women are going to hate me now, right? That's all right. Would I ever visit Israel? Not right now, but maybe someday. And yes, they'll be overly nice to me. I tell you, it's great to be an atheist around Christians, Muslims, Jews. Well, Jews don't care about atheists, atheists as much because what, a third of them are atheists. It's more of a culture. By the way, Christian men who are listening to what I just said, they're not in their heads. They're going, yeah. Thank you, Jesus, that my wife goes to him first, not me. Because some days you just want to sit on the couch and watch the game. <laughs> uh, I'm not a proper atheist. Well, you got that right. Doug, any future apologist you're planning to interview? No. Me and Reed were thinking of going to the University of Arizona campus and doing more in real life videos. But then I got sick. And um, then there's some down downside of doing in real life stuff in my own hometown but i do think in real life interviews conversations are better than this Because number one, if someone comes on right now, they're cognizant, they're aware of the fact there's close to 200 people watching as well. If you do a real life interview on a university campus, at best you might like get a half a dozen people listening in. Ah, good for you, Thom Rabbit Trabbit. Yeah, I tell you, um, the line that I give to Christians who especially believe in conscious, eternal conscious torment, you say, hey, if I'm wrong, I'll take my punishment like a man. Yeah, they don't know what to do with that. Like, they kind of respect you for that. Like, hey, it's my choice. And I'll take my punishment like a man. But in another sense, they don't like that answer because they go, well, then there's no hope. I mean, I can't even scare him to, into the kingdom. Yeah, that Frank Turk embrace was so touching. I'll bring it up. I mean, it was so genuine. Yeah. 
So this happened uh, in December, early December. Good. Just shows you can be like real people and still like people you disagree with. Nobody mentally together can claim to take hell like a man. That's just a contradiction. Well, it gets to the point of relief belief that it just shows people, um, Christians, that just how much you really don't believe hell exists. That's the main purpose of that statement. I'll take my punishment like a man. That, hey, I'm not scared. You can't scare me with heaven and hell. Both are scary, by the way. If you're not scared about heaven, I think there's something wrong with you. Yeah, Celine Dion's a Canadian national treasure. Like, me and Celine are like this, son. It's just too bad we couldn't talk. I saw him. I was doing an interview, or I was doing something. You know, I was doing an interview. And I saw him in the corner of my eye to my left. I was like, I'm going to wrap this up so I can talk to Frank. And then I wrapped it up, and then I went looking for him and he was gone and my heart was broken have I ever been on a Muslim show yes I have I was on um, what's it called Hamza's Den probably their best episode ever 54 minutes long I would never ever become a Muslim. Would you rather me be an atheist or a Christian? Ooh. Uh, I'll be honest with you, you both you both kind of mad. Um, <laughs> you can only I choose one. Um, I don't remember this. That's a great opening question. Oh, um, a Christian could kind of get the idea of God and could move on to Islam. I don't know. I, I, I'm I wouldn't know. But an atheist says there is no God. And that's halfway through their creed, except for Allah and Muhammad's as prophet. Yeah, uh, I treat you all the same. Because, to like, be honest least, with you, at least I'm not an, at yeah. least I'm not an idolater, right? Yeah, you're all the same. <laughs> you're all the same. As well. <laughs> no, no. Uh, there's no way a Muslim can say that an atheist, a true atheist, is an idolater. He's not, because in order to be an idolater, you have to worship a god other than Allah. And I'm not doing that. Now, he could say I'm worshiping myself, but, you know, I don't view myself as a god. Um, although, you know, some people do. I mean, who might argue with them if they view me as, maybe not a god, but god-like. Like, I can, you know, I can understand that. But I don't... I. I think an, um, a true Muslim have to, has to say that they like atheists better than Christians. Because Christians who believe, Trinitarian Christians at least, who believe that Jesus is God, they're the worst human on the planet. They're saying a man is a God? 
a deity, the creator of the universe, and you worship this man named Jesus, who is just a man. Well, not just a man. He was a prophet, a good prophet, but, but he's not God, for goodness sakes. I mean, a Muslim, I don't think it's a contest. I think Christians are way worse than atheists from the Muslim point of view. Maybe not Unitarian Christians. I think maybe they get slightly a, some type of pass, but... I was going to say you're all the same, mate. Um, that, that, as far as, yeah, because if you're a Christian, you, you reject Muhammad, um, you, you um, make God into something that I don't believe he is. Um, yeah. But at the same time, you would have an affinity, the idea, the concepts of God, angels and the supernatural and miracles. An atheist, you... Yeah, but so what? Like, what good is it to gain theism and the supernatural and lose your soul? Could well be in a, 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 a blank page that I could deal with. Because atheism doesn't stand up to scrutiny. It's such a negative position. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe science in the future will know. I don't know. I don't know. And <laughs> you can see what he values. Hamza values certainty. Uh, he values having to know the answer to every question. But then again, I'm sure Hamza would very easily admit that there's many, many things he doesn't know about Allah. Like that there's mysteries in the Quran. And, and for me, uh, here, here's how I'll, I'll epitomize it for you, Pine Creek. If you're a Christian, you put your mind in a box. If you're an atheist, you put your soul in a box. That's it. So you, you're giving something up. I believe only Islam can unite the brain and the soul and give it peace. So I don't have to. Yeah, so this conversation went on for about an hour and it was really good conversation we were all very cordial with each other but then afterwards uh i said that hey that was part of my strategy to be cordial and nice and not purposely not ruffle feathers they heard that and then said i was disingenuous that happened two years ago already wow Um, yes, I don't know is when it comes to the God existing question is agnostic, but I say I know there is no God. I know that Allah is not real. I know that Jesus is not God. I'll make that claim. And then, I mean, if that's not a setup for Christians to call in now, I, or even Muslims, I don't know what is. But it's called, um, if you guys want to watch it later, it's called Pine Creek Enters the Arena. Pine Creek Enters the Arena. What is my confidence that there's no biblical God? 99.9%. What's my confidence that there's no God in general? Some nebulous God? A little bit lower. Hey, <coughs> do we have a new person? <coughs> new person? No, it's John. Hey, Doug. Yes. Did you, like the, idea, Doug? did you like the video I made of you? I think you've done a good job, in fairness. You've done Because I know I was a little bit uh, all over the place. In fair, I was... I think, uh, yeah. Okay, but let's not talk politics today, okay? We we'll talk about Jesus. Yeah, let's talk about Jesus or Allah or Vishnu. Jesus, if I met Jesus now, I reckon I would blow his brains out with a machine gun. What are you saying? <laughs> 
Are you that bitter? Because he has caused so much trouble. He just look at all the trouble this whatever he is has done to humanity. Has he done good things? Does the concept of Christianity has it not done great things? Okay, that's, as well? we need to fight. Huh? Hasn't Christianity done great things as well? I can't think of very little that has done. You, you got it's, to it's, make um, sure your YouTube tab is off and you just have to, to me wear, wear by tab huh? on. It is off, yeah. I, okay. I never put it on. My son was born I in can't uh, St. What? Joseph's Hospital. St. Joseph's Hospital. That's where my son was born. I think my daughter was born there too. There's a lot of Catholic um, hospitals that do a lot of good things. Help people. Heal people. With science. Total. It's nothing. It's just... Uh... Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I just, I, 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 you're just pushing my buttons now when you mention Christians, St. Joseph. There are Christian missionaries. Sure, they proselytize, but they do, in fact, feed the poor. That's good, right? Um, I think there is, there, if you, like, Chris, Christopher Hitchkins really nailed it as far as I can see. What was that book he wrote? God, was it God spoils everything? Or uh, re do, you remember, um, do you remember the title of the book? It was an amazing, brilliant title. He nailed it. Yeah, I forget the title of it. <clears throat> he, he just, to me, well, I, I reckon anyway, it's, it's gone anyway. It's like, um, actually, I liked your, um, I don't know, I don't know when it was. I, I watch a lot of your stuff, actually. I'm not trying to blow smoke up your ass or anything, but. You you said how this guy uh, you know the guy with the dark glasses he um, he wrote this book about ten years ago on street street epistemology, epistemology. yeah yeah Peter Bogosian yeah <laughs> and I just loved the way he said well you Christians like you know you're insignificant now that, that book is no longer <laughs> I just loved I loved taking the wind out of christian sails like that. i know but john you there's something wrong not so, uh, there's something not right about you i mean i the, fa <laughs> the fact that you love me saying that christians are irrelevant I, and that you the machine gun comment like you gotta chill out a little like relax oh yeah i know i know I, okay I'm, I'm being a bit dramatic as well okay yeah because i'm just trying to Christians are people too, you know. I'm playing. I'm playing on the camera here a little bit. It's a bit of a. Actually, it's the first time. It's my second time ever being live on YouTube. So <laughs> it's a new experience. The now first time was with now you. Now you're as addicted. Well. Now you want to do social media every day. Not really, no. But um, it's a good. No, it's a. I like the fact that people on the ground in real life. Are getting a chance to um, express, you know, you as you say, you come from a farm. I, I grew up on a farm as well, still on a farm, and people on farms like we we learn things that you can't learn inside, you know, in a city. You know what I mean? Yeah, you you've been an atheist for uh, how many years now? For actually, quite recently, really. Um, it's only. <clears throat> where I completely, completely com seen that it's all bullshit is probably about less than a year ago. Okay. Yeah. You got about anywhere from one more to five more years before I think you cool your jets on this thing. Like you're, you're going to, you're going to be upset uh, about Christianity for another one to five years. And then after five years, you're going to relax a little bit. No, I'm actually already relaxed. I have to relax, Doug. My family are very seriously right-wing Catholic. Like, I, my brother now, right? We're milking cows here, dairy cattle. And um, 
I'll just give you an example of like he just he he nearly prays for advice. He'd be praying nearly for me for his decision making process, like yeah. And I, I was it's it's fucking nuts, like just view it as meditation. <laughs> well, I have to I have to die inside to fucking deal with that shit. <laughs> just view it as meditation. Like there's there's atheists who will who will be uh what, what's the word uh mindfulness and they'll go home and they'll they'll, they'll do poses and just view view these christians your family who do pray for every de decision as like an atheist who's practicing mindfulness and then that will help you um oh yeah well it's, it's true like you just kind of take it as it comes all right but i'm, I'm as you're saying right i'm realizing more and more the more you actually realize, that's why I, uh, that's one of the things I really like about your stuff is like being dead inside is a key to everything, really. You know what I mean? Because yeah. once you're dead inside and you're I walking like around, being dead inside is the key to life. <laughs> that should be a T-shirt. It fucking is. It is really because um, you see, you you uh, you're just there, right? You, and you anything can happen. Yeah, it's amazing, like you know, it's, it, and you just—it's just it, it leaves you in a, in a very, very powerful place because you see, as far as I can see, like Christianity taught us to be, you know, love your neighbor and all this, and you actually had you ended up completely taking your eye off the ball with all that crazy stuff that they, they were teaching us for years like it's, hey paul wants to know if you're a member of the ira no <laughs> <laughs> the ira is i reckon all that kind of crazy stuff that uh, happened in ireland well this is a conspiracy theory now but the english the um, I reckon it was funded from both sides. Like just looking at it from yeah, what I could see. I don't care about that. Well, let's not talk about yeah. that. But anyhow, nice to see you again, John. I hope uh, you're I hope done. <laughs> you're welcome for uh, for me entertaining you with my older videos and even some of my newer ones. And and I'm glad that you're. you're what well, I want to fight. I want to fight. I want to fight. No, like fight in Irish. Can we fight about anything? No. I, I don't think we can fight about anything. We agree on everything. No, right? no, just like argue about something and debate something, no? No, no. I like to pick a fight. Huh? And this is Theist Thursdays, and you're not a theist. Oh, yeah, but, okay, we can fight about um, how to deal with theists. <laughs> okay, one question. One question, right? One question I have for you. Um, okay. And your, I liked your, your thing about, this is a small bit off topic now, right? I like your thing, your twelve points about changing the educational system in America. Oh yeah, and I said that yesterday. one thing you said was you wouldn't have women in schools. Why was that? Is that is that a bit of from your past? I did not religious? say that. Women teachers, you said. I did not say I, th there should not be women teachers in schools. We should have mainly men. I said there should be more men teachers in schools. But this is about politics, and then people don't like that, and they get mad at me because it's what? Theist Thursday. Uh, you're, you're, you're not answering the question. <laughs> What's the question? Okay, I'll let you go. You want to go, yeah? Well, the premise of the question was wrong. But... You, you you had a preference for you want more male teachers. Yeah, I just wonder yes. why was that. Why? Uh, well, I, I answered can you explain? It, yeah, I answered it yesterday, and it, it's because I think you need more big, manly, masculine uh, authority figures in schools to help keep the discipline. That's that's why. Anyhow, thanks for calling in. You're breaking up too. I mean, it's. It's nice to have some non-binary people with with pastel colors and all, but sometimes you need a manly-looking man to scare the bejesus out of people, the kids. It's like, like if I, I, I still think I got it. I can make children cry with my stare. Billy.
Like, that's all you have to do. Archbishop Richard Forsgen. Well, there's a name. Men are underrepresented in teaching. Get those DEI departments dressing. Yeah. I mean, if there should be 50% um, male, female board members and companies, there should be at least 50% men in elementary schools. But again, this is politics. I'm begging, asking nicely for Theus to call in. I prefer new people. I'm still waiting for that uh, Pentecostal guy and his wife to come in, but they're scared. Yep. Boys need male role models. Oh, I so desperately want to talk about politics now, but... <clears throat> Holding back. Being dead inside. Join late. Where and when did I meet Turk? It was in Phoenix in uh, December of last year. Uh, it was the... Um, What's it called? What conference? America Fest conference? It's basically right wingers, mostly Christian or right wingers, talking about how um, bad Democrats are. I had fun though. I scared all the theists away. No, I didn't scare them away. They're well, I was going to say they're here listening, but they just don't want to come on. But maybe I did. Let's start a poll. It's confidential. I am a theist. Atheist. This is a true dichotomy in my opinion, but I'll add a third option just to keep people happy. Because I'm a people pleaser. What can I say? Um, okay, so I got three options. <laughs> Everybody wants to be a dork. Who doesn't? By the way, if you answer dork, I'm going to assume you're an atheist. So don't think you're being clever. You're kidding me. I got 26% theists in here right now and nobody's calling in? They must be all pantheists. Okay, I'm going to break my rule. I'm on record saying I hate pantheists, but if you're a pantheist, I'll even take you. Unless you're a naturalistic pantheist. To me, you're just a naturalist then. So you have to be a theistic type pantheist. Because some would say I'm a naturalistic pantheist. But I'm not. But some say I am. 31% dorks in here. I mean, you got to love it. Self-awareness is key in life. And if you're a dork, you got to own it. <laughs> dork lives matter. Now that's funny. <laughs> oh, that's racist, but it's funny. <laughs> oh. I'm a good racist, for those of you who are wondering. There's bad racists and good racists. I'm a good one. I'm a good honky. I'm a good white cracker. I'm old. I'm well-meaning. 
and I'm very forgetful. I can have confidential material. Ah, uh, stop with the politics. I've already talked to you, Tri Trite Arch. Is this the Franklin I know? It is the Franklin I know. Oh, let me let me get a YouTube off. Yeah. Don't Card be a rookie. Was... I know. I should know better by now. Uh I got tired of you begging, so I figured I'd call. <laughs> I still can't believe there's twenty three percent. That's uh close to fifty theists in here right now. Forty, fifty. <clears throat> well, I uh, wanted to ask the question based on the conversation you just had with John, but the, that what you just said reminded me of something, because um, I know you've been recently not having as much fun talking with theists, and, and it also seems like it's harder to get them to come on. And I think maybe what it is is that we're all used to the Internet now and this ability to be able to speak to each other. Um, and we've kind of, uh, those of us who on both sides are interested in this topic have probably heard everything by now. And I think we're yep. sort of in our corners, you know, like I've heard your points for the most part. I think you've heard everything Christians have to say. So I don't know how, how much of a chance there is for us to change one another's mind. So it may be just sort of, well, it's more for new people situation. like like uh when i was at america fest in phoenix there's a ton of people there who have no idea of the arguments against their position like not a clue and but the yeah. problem is they don't find channels like this um and even if they were to see it right now uh they have no desire to defend their beliefs or talk about it they just have no interest would that would that be a fun interview to talk to someone who's not so, interested no <laughs> well no not necessarily not interested but somebody who hasn't thought their position through yeah um, that is a fun interview is it okay because yeah, you know, I, I you know why i didn't know where you would land on that i i i um, love i love it because i you get that blank stare in their face and it gives me a, a huge dopamine hit when someone like you can sincerely see that they've never thought of that before and they go wow and it's like whoa that's as good as sex so do you think the <laughs> i'm not atheist... saying my wife has that, it, that, that... <laughs> so do you think the atheists have a similar group of those who they're atheists but have not considered it or do you think that's not a problem or less of a problem uh, in the United States, less of a problem because it's a Christian nation, I think 65%. And so they've, they're kind of forced to think through things a little bit more because they're the minority. Um, but I do think there are atheists out there who they're presented, let's say the fine tune arg argument for the first time. And they go, Whoa, I never thought of that. And then uh, the theists have a dopamine hit. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I mean, I, I don't know how the you know, the percentages would work out, but I would definitely think that's more of a Christian problem. I was just curious. I never really considered the atheist uh, having that sort of, um, um, although I do think atheists have tunnel vision. Uh, I, I do think it. More so than theists? No, it, exactly the same, but it's yeah. different in that I think uh, Christians can be far more simpler than atheists uh, typically. So although both would, could have tunnel vision, I think the atheists have more uh, answers because almost in in the, because you're in opposition to, I know it's atheism, it's really more anti-theism, I, I would argue. So you, you end yeah. up having to sort of establish the reasoning for you uh, being sort of against something. It's almost like, uh, uh, you're 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 establishing yourself almost as a minority in a tribal landscape and you have to at least define why you've chosen to do that like i would although i would argue we're 
I would have called myself an anti-theist for the first few years I was I came out of Christianity, and it's just natural because you kind of everything's new and fresh, and it's like you have a little bit of bitterness, and oh, people lied to you, and all this. You believe people lied to you, and uh, but now today I don't view myself as an anti-theist at all. So that's a good segue to the question that I had popped in my head while you were talking to John, which I loved his accent, by the way. <clears throat> um, it sounded, I don't understand the bitterness. I've never really understood that. I kind of uh, understand the annoyance, like nobody wants to be preached to. Even I get annoyed by fellow Christians. So I get that, but I've, I've always thought of atheism, the way, an atheist should be more pragmatic and utilitarian. I don't know what Christianity does that would be a threat. Like, it seems like it's a threatening thing. Like, oh, th think about the Christians. queer community. Like, that's the Christianity is a huge threat to the, a certain version of Christianity, at least, is a huge threat to the queer community. And a lot of people <clears throat> in the queer community are atheists. And so it could be as high as 30%. So 30% of that 66% of atheists who disagree with me politically, they hate Christianity. I mean, because basically, for certain versions of Christianity, they are saying to the queer people, you're going to hell. You're a bad person. You're evil. You'll never be accepted. And I mean, they're, they're hurt. They're scared. They're angry. Okay. I did, I mean, obviously abortion and, um, you know, sodomy is a big thing, I guess, for, for people. Uh, well, yeah, sodomy, I, I, really? I, oh, I, I yeah, mean, you, I mean, okay, never mind. Uh, abortion, the bo <laughs> <laughs> kind of part of the deal. <laughs> well, unless you're a lesbian, you know. Well, well, I don't know. Maybe they. You know what's they, weird when you said. I don't, know. I don't know why, but when you said sodomy, the first thing that popped my head was oral sex, not bum stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but um, uh, what, what was the other thing you said? Sodomy. Oh, abortion. With abortion, yeah, it's all over the map. Like you can have Christians who who are okay with abortion, but you know they're not true Christians. But yeah, no, I would likely agree with that i suppose that does come I, I i guess i should have answered that own question myself because i know uh, i think that there was that uh is it dr deity or mr deity mr or something deity like yeah that. and he said that uh what you uh you haven't quite deconstructed yet because you were still too conservative is that yeah. fair yeah uh, i i kind of agree with that in some sense because what <laughs> well because every well maybe this makes sense for you in our past conversations because i i i do lock in and, and you sort of said this because what you said about atheism when i asked a question about atheism you really went to liberal talking points and so there is this sort of dichotomy because well what, what you, you say about? conservatives are less for pro-gay and they're more pro-life liberal talking points would be pro-gay and pro-choice which would be on the atheist side of things. So when I asked about why would a what's the threat that atheists have against Christians, um, you went to the sort of a political spectrum. So I do think there's what I'm saying is that they're tied. They're kind of linked. Well, yeah, but there's other yeah. things too. Like I, I that was the first thing that popped yeah. my head. The other thing is like uh, what I said to John was that um, you honestly feel like you've been lied to most of your life, and that just causes bitterness. Yeah, I, I suppose so. I, I, I guess I differentiate the concept of lying in this respect. If somebody, so in other words, if somebody's telling you they believe something and it, and you find out that what they believe is untrue and you used to believe it too, that they lie, I, I don't know that I would No, have they didn't. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. I, I think people overuse the word lie all the time. I would say 90% of the time when people accuse other people of lying, they actually mean mistruthen. <laughs> right it's like yeah. they're not telling the truth yeah. which is different than lying right which is and and that goes back and there's to the dumb people there's dumb people who just heard what i said and and are trying to make sense of what i said but later on tonight when they put their head on the pillow they'll figure it out it'll take them a few hours well i think part of it is is we're so we're a little too quick to morally accuse each other 
both sides. You know, that's the other thing where it's like I and that's the part I understand that has been a problem with at least a character uh, characteristic or characterization of Christians is that we're overly judgmental and uh, con condemning. But the truth of the matter is, is that I think we've tasted enough of the secular worldview now and we see that. I don't know that that was a Christian problem. It's, it seems to me that that's just a, a people problem because we have the left yeah. now and they are as dogmatic and, and I mean. I actually uh, love judgmental people. I mean, it, it shows that they actually stand for something, are willing to defend it. Um, the people who have a problem with judgmental people are weak-minded people. Yes, I kind of agree with that. And I think it depends on how, how you look at the world and who has the power. It, it's worse for them because they believe in this co concept of the power dynamic, you know, sort of like the Marxian, whoever has the power. So if you, if you don't have power, you can't be a racist. But if you have the power and then who, who, who says who has the power? And so, uh, you know, I think that they abuse power. Um, and they shouldn't do that because they are the ones preaching that there's this power dynamic, but they actually do, you know, um, I, I think they violate. So they, they actually become what they hate. So they hate Christians for, you know, being hateful and let's say uh, kicking people out of the community. Yet they when they get the power, which is what we've seen in America, they are now canceling people and they are morally, morally uh, attacking people Like Christians are moral monsters because of how they treat the lgbt community you know th this sort of thing so it it's it's sort of like two religions in, in in some way yeah i don't disagree with that that uh they use the what is the paradox of something it's like it's okay to be intolerant of intolerance it's, what do they call that the paradox of something um but yeah, I mean, I'm okay with uh, secular hum humanists judging Christians, and I'm okay with Christians judging uh, secular humanists. Uh, let them judge away. But the you know, real question is, who's right? Who's wrong? What evidence do you have? Agreed. Me and you think that, but they're actually a little different in that they don't actually want to talk that out. They don't want to figure out who's right. They, want, they already know they're right, and they want to shut you up. Yeah, but I'm learning throughout time that it's such like what you're thinking of is the what I define as the crazy woke, and they're like 15 to 20 percent of the population. So, which is not a small percentage, but it's still a minority. Yeah, and I agree with that. And that's why it's nice, I think, too, when you like on your channel here, where you know, oh, I think I got a female who wants in we have a difference of opinion uh, many of us do it's nice that we can at least come together and kind of met out all the differences and talk over all these weird issues last not last time last time i i said that there's a female coming on because there's a person named jan who just clicked last time it was a trans person a trans woman <laughs> I wonder if it's the same thing's gonna happen to me oh i finally got a woman and then it's gonna be a man um <laughs> And I'll, dare you. I'll let you go, Franklin. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Doug. Oh, I'm going to laugh so hard if I'm right. <laughs> Jan. Oh, you're a guy. See? I guess Jan could be a guy's name. Oh, do I see some disappointment there? Yeah. I was hoping for a woman. Oh, yeah. I, I, I got something like that. It's, um, yeah, sorry to disappoint. That's okay. I, I'll get over it. You're from, yeah. uh, don't tell me. I want to say Holland. Are you Dutch? Yeah, I am. You are? Yeah, you're good at guessing. Um, yeah, well, I get a lot of Dutch viewers. I mean, the, the Dutch love me. They look at me and they see themselves. I mean, I look Dutch, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't Swedish, know. I don't know German. about that. I look like I think I think Hitler's you love direct communication, all right? What's that? You love direct communication, don't you? I lack direct communication. No, you love you like you like oh. to communicate with a very direct language. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do, uh, but yeah. I don't speak Dutch. But what did you want to talk about? 
Yeah, I have I have some um, some questions about you know your comments on uh, Peter Bogosian's content and basically on the oh, critics. critics. Good, good. Um, I'm going to make an exception. That's even though it's Thea's Thursday, I want to talk about this. Uh, did we talk in the comment section or on Twitter? Yeah. Yeah, we did talk in the comment section and also okay. a little bit in the Discord server earlier. Good. Someone in the live stream chat get all the street epistemology people here. Um, and then Jan and I are going to, we're going to solve this today. We're going to, for once and for uh, all, you and me. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm mostly here to just better understand your perspective. And, you know, I'm not. Um, You're going to do you know, the true SE thing. No, I'm not, I'm not really here for to SE, but we can do it like proper SE, but. Um, you know, it doesn't, we don't need to do that. We can just have a conversation, right? Okay, let so me set the stage. Let me quickly set the stage for the viewers listening so they're wondering what's going on. So if you're in the live stream chat, there's something called street epistemology, which is a, a technique, a tool, a, a skill set of having better conversations with people to d figure out what they believe and why they believe it and is it uh, reliable methods of, of how they come to it, how do they know, that's what epistemology means. Uh, Peter Bogosian started this about 10 years ago, How to Create Atheists. He wrote a book, and he kind of was the pioneer of street epistemology. But he's anti-woke, and uh, uh, he's, he calls people deranged, and he sometimes is mean. And so now there's this problem. Uh, street epistemology is supposed to be this nice civil technique, and yet we've got this, the leader that's viewed as a leader in many circles as being a, a bad guy. How is that for a summary? Yeah, for the most part, pretty good. But I mostly have some questions about the last two, three sentences. Okay, um, ask away. Because, yeah. Um, so, I'm I'm first going to make an attempt at, at um, you know, sum, summarizing the criticism that you made, or basically what the explanation explanation was that you uh, came up with in that video, right? And um, the way I understood your explanation was that you were mostly attributing this criticism of Peter Bogosian as these people who are criticizing Peter Bogosian just don't like his politics. Is that fair? Maybe there's also some a little bit about Yeah, there's other there's always other reasons factors, yeah. but I think yeah, it's there's, mostly there's... it's mostly yeah, the political stuff. Yeah, that's a, that's an important reason, right? Yeah. It's, it, yeah. Is it a fair summary of your view? Is that is that indeed what you think is the reason uh, people criticize him? Um, yes, actually, I think that's the majority of the reason. Okay. And do you think there is also something going on with something like guilt by association or something like that? Is that is that important yes. as well? Yep. I think they're kind of tied together. Yeah. Those, are they sort of the same thing in rough terms or um, not exactly? Yeah, I would say there could be the same thing. Because if guilt by association, guilty of what? It's uh, holding mm -hmm. the wrong political views or views that uh, are deemed as bad. And so therefore, we don't want to equate bad ideas with street epistemology. So it's about the content of the beliefs? That's Yeah. That, okay, so it doesn't matter with the the method of SE that that Peter uses. It's you, you think people people criticize. I think people use the content? method. I think people use a lot of a lot, not all, but some people in the SE community. Um, when they think Peter Bogosian is doing SE, he's not doing SE. And when he does mm -hmm. SE, he does it well. I think he's very similar to me, and mm -hmm. and I think it's just his internal beliefs about certain political issues that are so repulsive to some people in the SE community that mm -hmm. they it, it they just don't want SC's brand to be tarnished. Yeah, I think that's um, maybe it's maybe it's a good idea if I also tell a little bit about myself and why I'm interested in this in this topic a topic right that, that might be Are you on the board? Um, no, I'm not on the board of uh, SEI. Okay. Um, uh, I'm mostly interested in having uh, more civil conversations. Um, I'm uh, doing some volunteer translation work for SEI with the Navigating Beliefs course. I'm a very active member of the uh, SE Discord server. Um, so you're probably good friends with Reed. 
or no? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I've chatted with Reed and, um, you know, maybe... Because um, Reed, Reed and I are like this, son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're tight. Yeah. Um, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and I think that's uh, Reed is also an example of someone who can do uh, really good as he... Um, I yeah. think there are examples of, of, of Reed with a really good SE. Yep. Um, and this is also one of the challenges that I put forward in my comments to your explanation, right? That um, yeah. critics of uh, SE do not like, do not have as much. Critics of Peter are not as critical of Reed, while they have the same political views for the most part. Okay, this is where I disagree. Uh, because of certain reasons. I, 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 I agree with you, they're not as critical of, of Reed as Peter, but if Reed were to be as big as Peter on social media and in his private circles and even public circles when he's giving his opinion on, on certain political ideas. So if Reed from Cordia Curiosity were to come out, if he were to come on right now, and he might be listening, and say, yeah, I don't, I don't think trans women are real women. I really don't. I think my definition of women and men are based on chromosomes and whatever. And yes, we've got intersex. If he were to come out and say that and say they're not real women, if he would even say that, yes, uh, they're, uh, this is a mental illness, uh, and if he was to use the deranged word like Peter does, I would predict that... And if he was to put SE on all his videos that he currently has, but still makes this known so that when people think of SE, they think of anti-woke, there would be, they would, people in the SE community would start to complain about Reed. That's my prediction. Hmm. Yeah, and of, of course, this is not a, a prediction we can really test right now, right? Because yeah. this is not something that's happening. So um, I was It wondering... could happen. We could actually hire Reed to do it. <laughs> yeah so but this is like not really much of an th this argument doesn't doesn't hold much water right if, because it's untestable right now so right um, I, I, I thinking, agree yeah so maybe there is a stronger test we can come up with like uh, right to see what people um actually have as reasons for uh, criticizing peter well first of all if the criticism is about technique um you can actually come up with very simple things like find me a video where uh, Peter Bergosian is actually doing SE and not just giving his opinion on things or talking to someone he already agrees with. He's doing an interview, an SE interview, where he set, calls someone to their face deranged. Have you ever seen Peter do that? Well, the crit I think the criticisms of, S of, of Reed, oh, the, sorry, the criticisms of Peter are not really about his uh, usage of the word deranged in uh, the SE context, in the SE conversation context, I think. Um, surely, I think it's not a very nice word to use to describe people with. Um, I agree. But that's, you know, if you don't do that in the context of an SE conversation, I would say that my estimation of many of the critics in the SE community would not have such a big problem with it. Um, now, um, I, I, I agree. There may, might also be some people who would still have this this view that then it's still a problem, right? That's but there is there, it's not like your argument is completely um, meaningless or doesn't uh, like not at all rep represent. I got to be thing. honest with you, Jan. This conversation is going a little too slow for me. So let's like cut right to the chase. I I, I think that the issue is not so much about technique. Uh, because there are many yeah, SE people, is... there are many SE people who don't have perfect technique, uh, and you need a standard. And I know S the SEI has made a standard of what is good SE. I get that. Yeah. But nobody is going to. Be also, and, so, and so has Peter done in his books, right? Yeah, yeah. And and so the and real he, he doesn't do what he doesn't do what he describes in his books. Okay, that yes, this is the issue, and I say there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing no. wrong with saying, here's how you have a better co uh, conversation with someone, and then choosing not to do it. Yeah, and he, he, he can do it. And then, um, you know, since since there are now a lot of people interested in SE, 
and they don't like that he is not doing what he's saying. He's doing false advertising. No, no. It's a problem. If if some are you saying every conversation Peter needs to ha uh, does has to be an SE type conversation? No. Okay. But when he does when he does when he does label it SE, it probably should be good SE, right? If you're the author of the book and then don't do good SE. Okay. So here's the issue. Like, there's a problem, right? Here's the issue. If you go to uh, Peter Bogosian's website right now on YouTube and type in uh, street epistemology. I would say 90% of it is spectrum street epistemology. Yeah, right. I agree. So yeah. do you view spectrum street epistemology the same as street epistemology? Because they share the same two words? Now, I, I agree that there is a little bit of the, uh, light between the two, right? It's not exactly the same. Uh, but I think that's, you know, maybe a little bit. He, he, sometimes he introduces a video that is used that is labeled spectrum street epistemology, but in the video he uses the word let's play some street epistemology, right? So it's not even like he's using these words very consistently uh, in, in a right in a clear yeah. distinction. I agree. So it's it it's a I think it's this is a very you know you're trying to 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 squeeze in some room for this to, for a distinction that really isn't there. I think. Well, is this fair or? Um, number one, Peter has, is under no obligation to agree with SEI's definition of street epistemology. Whenever you say he's under no obligation, I already agree. Right. Okay. So you don't need to say anything else after that. I so agree. really, so then the question is, what are we really talking about? So well, he's, he's just doing, he, he's doing what he SME. wants to do. Yeah. But he is labeling something SE that is not SE by the standards of his own book and by the standards of the SE course. Okay, by the standards of his own book. What are those standards? Well, there's a bunch of things there, right? There is um, uh, the, the goal of um, promoting understanding, promoting critical reflection, having certain types of mindset. There's also all sorts of things that we can, we can talk about. Um, okay, now no, who's the judge? No, there's, there's, a caveat, there's a caveat I need to make, right? I haven't read his books. I've just read the course and people have told me that the books and the course are similar. Okay. So that's something to be So careful. let's say you found yeah. found his books that he wrote. He's written a couple of them, right? And yeah, one of them, is, one one of them is promoting critical thinking. Do you think street uh, Spectrum Street Epistemology promotes critical thinking? Well, this is a tricky question, right? Um, it's See, cool it's subjective, case. right? Mm, well, I think it's an empirical claim. Well, I, I think it's, it's a matter of opinion. Like, because the best answer I think you and I could give to that the question I just asked is yes, but to what degree? Like, is promoting critical thinking if someone like has like a, a a light go a light bulb go off in their head for two seconds does that count as promoting critical thinking like how far do you have to go how deep do you have to go before it's really critical thinking this is all subjective stuff mm, i don't know there's there's some markers you can look for sure typically a marker for when someone is thinking critically you see them pause and you see them for example look at the ceiling and you know stuff like that but it's so context dependent yeah but that's they can vocalize it often right that makes me think oh i'm not sure about that stuff like that is all types of indications all types of markers that there is the critical reflection going on i don't know this we could probably measure that like how often that occurs in these videos but then you can also think about the audience right and i, I guess that's where you work you want to go with this that he is inspiring his audience with critical thinking um, and not his. Like, did you uh, watch me do? Thing. Did you watch me do Spectrum Street epistemology? I did no, in I, real I life. You, yeah, I know you've done some, and um, I'm, I'm. I've heard people say that you do a better job of it than Peter. So, um, but I haven't watched it myself. I think, or I've watched a part of it. Okay, so I encourage you. I uh, go Pine Creek in real life IRL later on, in comfort of your home later, and watch it, and. I haven't read Peter's books. I, frankly, mm -hmm. I don't care to. 
Um, but I have watched Peter do Spectrum Sp Street Epistemology. And frankly, in my opinion, it's way more fun. It's way more interesting. And I yeah. do think it promotes critical thinking, even if it's just a little bit. And when I did it, I, um, I encourage people to actually ask me questions back. And Peter does that too. And at the end of it, we were all happy People who disagreed with each other were all happy and said, and they wanted to keep going. They wanted to do again. And yeah. I see that same thing happening with Peter when he does it. So you got those elements yeah, of his, own, you got the elements yeah. of his own book about having cordial conversations, um, asking questions, Socratic method. Uh, and we got these little things on the ground to help, you know, it makes it more, more like a game. It's more fun. I mean, What's the problem here? Yeah, my challenge for uh, for people who want to figure out like is actual critical thinking going on um, would be to look for a video of Peter Bogosian where he does Spectrum Street epistemology, and then find out: Do I know more about the quality of the reasons that people have given here? Like, is this a good quality reason that that people are giving? To arrive at this belief. Okay, when you Have say good, qu when you say good quality reason, yeah, that's subjective. You can say, well, yeah. no, that's that's a quality reason, but that isn't a quality reason. When yeah, sure. have you ever seen Peter get the marker board out? Yeah, and then you have to guess each other's reasons. Yeah, isn't that a type of getting to figure out what are the reasons why people believe? Yeah, but it is, what you said is true, but it's not a way of assessing the quality of those reasons. Okay, it so is you're, just identi it is identifying the reasons, but not. Okay, so you, your 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 issue is that it's it doesn't it stops it goes to what you believe, why you believe it, and it stops there. Yeah. Okay, you've never seen conversations with Peter where he um, uses people to get to the quality of the reasons. But it's a, like I I agree with you. It's not in um, it's not in the typical SE way of of say using the outsider test for faith or whatever. But when yeah. when someone like if there's more than one person playing the game and someone says, "Here's my reason," and they don't we don't examine the quality, but someone says, "Hey, I like that reason. Maybe I'll shift one to the left or one to the right." It it is a a type of Doxax, they're not doxastically closed. It's a type of openness where someone is hearing another person's reason. And even though they might not be articulating uh, whether it's a good reason or, or bad, they're actually showing it. They're demonstrating that this reason is good enough for them to change their mind. And I've seen this in Peter's videos. So I think the problem you're saying is it's not being articulated clearly and directly but it is in their head i mean it's happening you can see it you can see people change their minds in real time now you can still say well they might be changing their mind for a bad reason right but i mean this is just part of the process of getting people to think about that maybe their reason is not good enough and another one reason is bad and maybe a week later they will shift again at least it's starting, it's getting the ball rolling. And to me, this is great advertising for SE. And I personally do not, I can't think of any other reason why people are poo-pooing this other than when Peter's on videos doing non-street epistemology type stuff, he's giving his strong opinionated re, um, uh, opinions on stuff that people don't like. Yeah, well, here you have someone in your call right now who uh, disagrees with that take. Um, so that's already NS1, right? Um, so, uh, and then still, like, all right, what's, what's, what are some things we can do that, to, to promote um, good quality reasoning, to promote critical reflection? We can do the outsider test, you already mentioned it. We can do, like, a general, like, how do we test this, whether this is true? Mm -hmm. We can think about... Um, what could be alternative explanations for, for things that are going on? 
like to explain what's going on, and we, we can also even, even do this with this particular claim okay, that you're making. Right now. Again, street ep spectrum street epistemology, <coughs> its goal is not to go further than that. And if you don't view that as street epistemology, then then it's back down to don't label it street epistemology if it's not street epistemology because we don't want to tarnish the brand. And I ask why? What are you so fearful? Why why do you want these two words street epistemology to be this? Yeah, and and that's that's a good point, right? We, it, it could also be something. It's um, branding. It's it, it, yeah, it's, it's it's branding, and 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 that's and, and that's cool, right? Uh, I, I don't know why Peter went back to using this particular brand because you know he at some point uh, explicitly um, stated that he wanted to put himself uh, farther away from the brand because um, he had other uh, other ideas, right? He's, he has expressed his um, his goals in uh, some of his earlier videos, like he wants to fight a culture war. That's his goal, you know. Good luck with that, but then don't claim that you're doing street epistemology because that's not what you're doing. That's not that those two goals are incompatible. I, I hear what you're saying, um, and strictly I would agree with you, but I I just can't understand the only explanation, not the only, but one of the biggest explanations I can come up with is that because of Peter's political stance, people are so turned off. Like if Peter. I really truly believe this. If Peter were to take everything he said that's anti-woke and apply it to fascism or authoritarianism or Christian nationalism, I really don't think we would be having this conversation right now. Oh, uh, hang on. Don't don't go anywhere. I'm going to make the room bigger and Reed Reed wants to come in. Is that all right? Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Let's see if this works. Hey, hey, Reed. <laughs> hey, what's up? Hey, Reed. Do you you know Jan? I assume. Yep. Yep. Okay. And you've how long you've been listening in? Uh, yeah, I listened to all of it, but I missed like the past minute getting the whereby set up. Okay. Was well, there anything that I said or he said that you want to comment on? Um, basically, I think it's vague or just misunderstood what the primary goal of SE is, S SC and SSE. I think it's, with SSE, it's also about helping people critically reflect on the quality of the reasons. And I think we get to that a lot of time, but there's also additional goals of helping people speak across divides and helping people still man each other. A lot of critical thinking goals are, uh, associated with SSE and built into it. I'm trying, and it's all still very experimental. So I'm open to feedback and we'll see how it goes. Do you agree with that, Jen? That like, like things like, cause I've done that too. I've asked when I did Spectrum S, uh, SE with Reed in Phoenix, um, I asked the Steelman question often, like, yeah. And, and I think that's a beautiful aspect of Spectrum Street epistemology indeed, right? That's that's cool. Um, so um, I think there is there is some great potential for the method street, uh, Spectrum Street epistemology. Um, I just think that the way Peter is doing uh, is doing it right now is um, I think it's better explained by the by the by the hypothesis or by the goals that he speaks about himself, right? He wants to fight a culture war, and that explains better why he does it this way than any other way. And that's fine; he can do that. But it's a little little, little bit problematic when um, when you want to have a certain meaning of of the word street epistemology in your own book and also in the com a current SE community and uh, also in the SE course. That is contradicting with this goal. That are, cannot go together with this goal. So, if he would not have written those books, ever, and if he did everything else the same, he did Spectrum Street Epistemology and labeled that as Spectrum Street Epistemology, would you have less of a problem? Like, is the main problem here hypocrisy? Well, mm, it would still be false advertising, right? Um, he would still label something SE that is not SE according to 
um, a couple standards that we can point to. We can point to the course, we can po point to books. Um, I think it makes it harder to uh, disassociate um, uh, what he is doing from um, from the brand, right? Because he is the author of the book, and some people might claim because he is the author of the book, he has a special privilege of uh, of using the term, right? That's I think that's that's a fair point to make uh, that he has some special privilege, and therefore the community doesn't have that's as much. Jen. You made a good point here. What if Peter was to come on right now and say? You guys are hurting his brand. You guys are not yeah. doing real street epistemology, and he is. But then the, then the question is, why did he write the things he wrote, wrote in his books? Well, I people change their mind. Like, if, if you, even if you believe that he's doing something different than what he espoused in his books, can't a person adapt and change and try new things? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so then, and now yeah, he's, he's calling this the real SC. And so yeah. what Anthony and, and you guys are doing is actually SC 2.0. I mean, it's it's yeah, it's not the real SC. Yeah, but is, is, it then fair, <laughs> is it then fair for me to say, hey, uh, all, all fair and uh, fair and well, but what you're doing there is not um, is not in according with the the standards that we that we can refer to in the course and the books. Right, but that, your standards don't matter. Is what I'm saying to him. Yeah, and then you know we can be happy happy to disagree about that, and that's all fine. Okay, so what's, let's recap. What is the main problem? Is it hypocrisy or is it just not uh, adhering to the standards that he had no part in making? Well, he had a part in making because he wrote the books. Okay, so are the standards based entirely on his books? No, they are, uh, they are exp expanding on, on that, uh, I believe. But uh, I believe Reed, Reed can talk better about that because, you know, he's been longer involved in yeah. the uh, evolution from the books to the course. Yeah. Jan is translating the Navigating Beliefs course, which I helped write with Anthony and Rom for the past, like, two years. So we're both very familiar with that, at least, uh, you know, that course. But I'm also very familiar with Peter's books as well. And I can tell the difference between what Peter says and what now the community is wanting SE to be. I see Peter's is very much an activist form of SE from the beginning. He wanted to deal with the problem of a, you know, faith as a mind virus. And now he wants to deal with the problem of, as a wokeness as a mind virus. He has activist goals to deal with these societal problems. And I think the Navigating Police course will be addressing uh, that later on. It's the last module, uh, unfortunately, the activist SE uh, module, which is coming up in the second phase of the course. Hopefully, we'll be having it done by the end of this year. So the first half is all about rapport and the ethics and the goals. But there's more stuff that SE could be doing that I think is more in line with what Peter's doing, because basically, all of what Peter is doing is my fault. It's I, <laughs> I, uh, if you want to say that, I innovated SSE on his reverse Q&A tour because what Peter was doing was not interesting. It completely failed on that university tour. So I thought, why not try to do this thing like what Jubilee is doing, but just, uh, just to see if that makes it more interesting, not even thinking of what, how it could be related to SE. So then we started doing like the Jubilee thing and then, but Nathan was there and Mark was there and we're all like SE people and we're like, well, if you do this and you do that, it'll be more, you know, more, more interesting, more about critical thinking because we're all about that from being. In okay. The this SE is community. good. This is good to read because yeah. if it's your fault, why is Peter gaining the blame? Because I don't see me behind the scenes he's peter's just did. the front man you're the brains behind the operation basically <laughs> yeah so uh, I, I believe this is very cool because this this i think this highlights a, a, a difference in perspective um that has um uh, come about between um you know a whole bunch of people who have experiment uh, the, the, the community has formed itself around the ideas of street epistemology and has experimented with it um uh, more and um, you know, there are certain things that 
you know, not saying uh, words like deranged and delusional or mentally ill about people who have cer with certain beliefs that we can all with common sense say, like, that, that doesn't really help with critical reflection or increasing understanding. And I think that if we would, um, I think if we would, uh, um, you know, do all the things that, uh, that are described in the course uh, so far with respect to good rapport, and um, then we also have uh, good quality reasoning that there will be good quality content even from Peter Bogosian. I think he can learn that, but he isn't showing it right now. I, are you muted, uh, Pine? You're muted. Oh, sorry. Do you think Peter's lacking in uh, rapport techniques? Um, when he's actually talking to people on the street. So it's, I think that this is a technical term from the SE course that might be a little bit harder to um, like just yes or no answer, right? There is a whole bunch of things that are described in the SE course, which I'm most familiar with, right? Um, that are things that damage rapport and things that improve rapport and establish rapport. So, you know, we can go through that and that will be extremely interesting. I will be very interested. But you've in watched his videos, right? Some of them? Yeah, but if I now if I now just flat out say um, th that there is a problem with that, I think the audience might get the impression that I'm saying something different than what I'm actually saying. So I'm referring to a standard that is, by my by my understanding, established in the SE course. So um, I think that's an important like caveat. to me the best the best marker. And I've taken the the module one or whatever. I've I went through it. But to me, if at the end, everybody's happy and smiling and hugging and shaking hands, you've done a good job. I mean, um, and I have very rarely, in fact, Reed, can you think of a case where when Peter's talking to strangers and playing that game spectrum where people have been mad and angry and left like yelling at each other? I haven't seen that. Well, if you don't count the mo probably the most... The oh, Nathan. Top three, the top three <laughs> most popular <laughs> videos are when it became heated. And uh, unfortunately, that was, you know, when they did get heated and it get, they got angry. That is his top three most popular videos. You know, they're at, in the University of Oregon. They're on the campus of PSU. That wasn't exactly the game he was doing with other people. And then he got... Yeah, see, you know, that mobbed. wasn't the game. It was people watching the game, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's from like a year and a half ago, and I've been working with him now for like two years, and even from the beginning of last year, I've been trying to experiment and evolve it. And this past like four weeks, we've recorded a ton of content. It's now all of this stuff is now coming out in the, like in the past few weeks, and I think it's at the, a point where I would be happy with. Um, making like an official relationship between SCI and, and Peter, if people are more on, board, more on board with this. Like I see no problem at this point. It is talking about woke topics very often and culture war issues, but it's done in a great way that it yeah. seems like most people ha really enjoy. Uh, but I'm open to keeping so the, it separate and just whatever. The Wichita Home Office has done polling data and they've said I'm the best rapport guy in SC in the world. And even I make mistakes and have had a few blow ups once in a while. So, you know, nobody's perfect. Peter's not perfect. But I think overall, if you look at most of his videos, he hits the rapport stuff pretty good. Um, it is interesting. He does talk about why people believe things and the quality of the belief. Like Rita, you, you typed something in the live stream chat before you got in here. Do you want to talk more about that? Yeah, we haven't written a module on evaluating the quality of reasoning yet, so it's hard to know what exactly we mean when we say that. What I what I mean is basically, are you talking about the reasons and the quality of those reasons in terms of criticism for them? Like reasons against the reasons and reasons for reasons. And you can just keep going down for, for reasons for reasons for reasons. You, if, as long as you're talking about these things in terms of criticism, you're evaluating quality of reasons. And a lot of time on SSC, we start with a main topic and a main claim, and we get reasons from both sides. And I'm there in the side of the room, basically on a laptop, mapping out the entire argument. And I'm hearing 
uh, either assumptions people are making or reasons for reasons. And then I, I put up a new claim on the board that relates exactly to the quality of the reasoning as far as I can tell. And we just keep playing. Until I'm peeling, it, yeah, I'm peeling that onion. Until it becomes like, okay, now we understand each other. And that's a success for now. Once we've understood enough. And if we go to a yeah. completely different topic, it'll we'll just reset. So, and I think I think there's, yeah, there's there's something. Um, I I think this is a pretty recent addition to the ideas of street epistemology that uh, we can also um, um, use nonviolent communication in the context of a conversation with someone, right? And I'm not. Sure, I don't. I think many people are not familiar with what nonviolent communication is. Um, so, you know, in, in, in two sentences, basically, it is a way to talk about um, other reasons than rational reasons why people uh, do certain stuff. Also, believe certain st I think the combination with SE also allows uh, to talk about why people believe certain stuff. But it's also about, hey, why do you do this? Or what, 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 what need do you have? Why do you get emotional? Um, um, uh, st stuff like that. I think that's... That's a powerful technique to combine with SE, right? Um, and a crucial part of um, of nonviolent communication, and I think it's it is already in the course described as a crucial part of SE, is um, to have a civil conversation with, with with the other person, where you have a strong sense of empathy for, um, like, how did we get here? Why are we where we are? And I think using words like deranged, delusional, or mentally ill, and what not more, that, that kind of stuff. You can say Pine Creek that Peter Neal's rapport. No, he doesn't. If you say st stuff like that, you're just. Oh, wait a minute! 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 If if I say um, it is crazy to believe a man rose from the dead two thousand years ago, yeah, that's. And then, are you saying I cannot have a good conversation with Christians? If no, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that is is reducing the um, opportunities for critical reflection. No, when does no, he do this in SE context? Yeah, he doesn't do that. He, like, have you ever heard an uh, SSE or SE thing done by Peter where he calls someone deranged to their face? Um, I don't have this. I'm pretty sure I can come up with that. Um, I, I don't have it with me right now but you might be able to find one i can't think of any of yeah. can you think of any of off the top of your head i remember peter calling someone who was walking by and not playing remember that guy with the the old man with the ponytail the typical stereotypical woke guy <laughs> mm -hmm. and yeah, i think uh, and Rick, Pine, let, let, let's be fair reed already said there is a massive amount of improvement recently going on Right. So if, even if we kind of can find very old examples, those would not be very relevant because they, they can be yeah, dismissed true. with recent improvement. So, you know, we don't even need to go there to find such types of evidence. I know. But mm -hmm. what you you actually triggered me a little bit because you said something about empathy for people that you're interviewing. Yeah. What does empathy have anything to do with it? Well, do you think that it is... Um, easier and uh, you will have better conversations when you try to meet a person where they are at in re in, with respect to their emotions and um, uh, their beliefs. Sure, yes, it can be a benefit, but I'm saying that you could actually be dead inside in a robot and do a good SC conversation. Yeah, absolutely. chat GPI. <laughs> yeah, and I've, I've created I've created a, 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 a chatbot, right? So. Uh, on, on based on ChatGPT that does as e conversation. That's totally possible. But I think it's even better when you also engage people where they're at with respect to their emotions, beliefs, and... Um, but it could also be a detriment too, right? Well, depends how you... Nah, I don't know. That, that's an interesting topic to explore. Yeah, like emotions can get in the way of critical reasoning. Yeah, but then like, you know, meeting, where the, meeting them where they're at, that's what I mean. I'm not saying that. So when someone is emotional, mm -hmm. then it's detrimental to ignore that emotion. That, that's an emotion. That's something that needs to be addressed. Okay. So yeah, you're like. So if uh, someone starts crying because of the topic, you're saying they should change topics. No. 
I think there's ways like, and this still doesn't very, work very well in video, in, in, in recorded and, you know, when there is an audience watching and stuff like that, right? But in a, in, if you have an, a conversation with your family and somebody starts have, uh, expressing emotions and then you try to keep asking questions to help them critically reflect on the quality of the reasoning, that's a mismatch. You're not meeting that. Yeah, yeah. you, you got to be smart. You got to realize that, hey, this is not working um, and not don't continue doing the same thing that's not working. Yeah, I get that. But I think what what you're what we're talking about right now is maybe one of the real issues is that Peter doesn't care about a certain segment of society and he ought to. Is this what we're really talking about? Um yeah, I think I think we if we stop caring about a certain segment of uh, society, I think that's really really dangerous. Okay, but what does this have if to do? If we stop with... seeing them as if we stop seeing them as people with you... a certain emotions and a certain background and a history where of where they got, that sounds like a really dangerous path to go. Okay, and and is this how you view Peter with certain I don't people? Know. I don't I don't I don't know. I think I, I see Peter as someone who has arrived where he's at right now because of his um, his background, right? He he had certain experiences, he had certain beliefs, he had certain mm -hmm. emotions at certain times, he experienced certain events that lead him to where he's at right now. So that's why I'm, I'm not... Even but when you hear Peter say that certain beliefs are deranged and woke ideology is a bunch of horse shit, when you hear him say that, do you yeah. automatically equate that to him not caring about people? No, not automatically. I think he's expressing as, and, and this is this is getting into um, like a little bit more. The language here gets a little bit more complicated when you're not familiar with SE. So if you don't understand what I'm saying, going to say right now, it's it might help to um, to find out a little bit more about nonviolent communication um, to better understand it. So if I see Peter express his views like that. What I see is someone who is probably in pain, has some, um, has some, um, uh, possibly some, um, um, some background of, 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 I don't know, um, maybe some, something is, something is hurting and I don't know. At some point, I have got to stop and ask him, like, what what's going on? Why do you express yourself in this way? Like, this is not how I talk to my my friends. I don't talk to my friends about. I don't don't talk about my friends that hey we. Okay, let, 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 so something 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 is not. Uh, I, 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 I got to say this, like, um, I actually think thinking like the Catholics believe that the cracker becomes the body of the Christ and the wine becomes the blood of Jesus. I actually would use the word deranged to describe that belief. I would. And I think it is absolutely nuts what a lot of Christians believe. But guess what? I've had great conversations with Christians. And I think Peter can do the same, even with what yeah. he calls woke. And maybe, maybe this is, maybe this is, True, right? Maybe this is how how these words have their meaning. I don't know. I'm not I'm not a native English speaker, so I don't know how these words are used. Yeah. But earlier, when we had when we talked about the word deranged, we all agreed that this is not um, a, a very civil way of talking about people, right? Didn't I can I can still man the critics of Peter uh, when he says deranged as a term. They see that as dehumanizing and not in line with the eth you know the general spirit of se if one was genuinely you know cared about se then they would ideally live <laughs> according to the se rapport uh no no that's not a in, in life that's not a i'll be right back you guys keep talking but in generally using strong language such as that uh very often is interpreted as dehumanizing, and that is uh, not in line with what we want SE to be in terms of the brand. Or is that wrong? Yeah, that's 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 not a Steelman version of the argument. 
right? Because then we are extending the virtues that uh, belong to street epistemology. We are extending those uh, beyond the SE conversation, right? Then we are saying you cannot ever be um, uncivil and anywhere. And that's a very that's a very high standard to meet. All, okay. all, that, all that's asked of, of Peter is to be civil and respectful and is, uh, promote critical reflection while he is doing SE conversations. Okay, great. If he, does, if, if he doesn't do that, then he should not label it SE. If he intends to fight a culture war, he should probably should not label it SE or he, should, or he can be inconsistent with his... Uh, he can be also be inconsistent with his own books, right? And he can also say, like, I have a different meaning of the word SE, but that's, I don't know why he would want to do that. Like, is there any benefit to using the label SE for a culture war perspective? I don't know. I, I think uh, people can do have political and social activist goals and want to create SE content in, on, yep. in the service of those activist goals. This yep, is what we're going to be talking about in the activism module. So I'm not sure what the problem is in terms of his activist goals and mine. Yeah, but, um, and, and we, we can we can talk more about um, the very specifics, right? At some point we get we are having to get in the very details of what's going on here. But um, what, what I think is most interesting to talk about in this context is like, what is the criticism of those people who are critical from inside the SE community towards Peter's SE. I think that's most interesting. And I think currently, and the, the reason I came on this show, is that um, a, a story is spread where um, people who are from the SE community are critical of Peter because of his political views. And that is a strong man. I think and what it's the truth. Also, what you, what you also just described, Reed, is also a straw man of the criticism. And again, I'm using the word straw man here not as, a, as an insult. I'm using it as, hey, this is not the strongest version of the arguments that are being presented. I, I think um, if I w had 200,000 more subscribers and more views than Peter, uh, this conversation would be about me and not him. Are you labeling your content SE? Some, yeah. All my IRL ones, I've labeled as SE, the ones that we and I did together. Have you been um, criticized about those SE conversations, those conversations that you are labeling SE? I would dare to put my, S, those uh, Spectrum Street, there was all, well, not all Spectrum. There was some Spectrum, some regular. I would put them side by side with Peter's and I bet you, if you had a panel of judges based on your standards of what SE is, you would probably rank me and Peter about equal. Just either I don't, just I don't, as good or just as so. bad, it would be about the same. I don't think so. There's something, you have a, you have a, very, you have a very powerful skill, um, and you're very good at this. You're able to present the argument from your uh, conversation partner to their own satisfaction. So you're saying I'm better than Peter? Yeah. At least from what I've seen so far. Yeah, I. To, to me, this is just a matter of opinion. I mean, do, if you yeah, sure, if you were to oh, like adjudicate it using the standards you were talking then, about, I mean, it would be still then, very subjective. Then, yeah, but all, all right. But then you have your opinion that it is uh, because we because people from the SE community uh, disagree with him politically, right? And I have my opinion that it is for the reasons I described. No, I, you're, I, no you're I'm not, saying it's still political with me. Like, because I will say things like trans women are not real women. Like, I'll say stuff like then, that publicly. And which yeah. is a very, anti, a very, yeah, anti-woke thing to say. And I think that if, if my face became uh, part of the brand, when people see me, they think street epistemology. But how does your face become part of the brand? same as peter's like you're you think pe pe most people read his mm. books no um so mm. i think i think this whole conversation would be well doug is he doesn't have empathy for certain people in society so yeah. let's pick on doug now 
because now he's bigger I've than mostly, Peter. Yeah, I've mostly just heard you uh, repeat your your uh, position. I've not really heard you like. Is there a test we can do for your position? Yeah, we talked about this already, and we both agreed that the best test. Well, what would is be the, okay? That, what's the quality? What is the test you provided again? The test that I provided what would be to um, have Reed or have myself be more popular than than Peter and do the exact same have the exact same SC videos but then make claims when we're not doing SC these big political claims yeah but we can't do this test right like we can that experiment you can make me uh, have 200,000 more subs <laughs> <laughs> so this this is, well, is this a good quality test can like is this a test we can actually do with tech technically you could yes it would be very difficult though okay can we have you didn't, you didn't ask for a realistic practical test you said a test yeah it, that, so it, that would be a test and my guess yeah. is um yeah this is this is again like you know we, we can we can come up with the weakest version of my question right that well why don't you propose a test jan yeah, but I'm trying to imp to to also help you help critically reflect a bit on the quality of your reasoning. Here, Propose right? a test I'm to falsify um, my claim. What I about? have some. Okay, Reed, go ahead. What's yeah. your what's your uh, test? SEI is working on two kind of uh, guidelines. A strict. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Is this what? Uh, hold on. Just to make clear, what the claim we are talking about is. The reason that the main reason are, is po the main reason of, people are critical of Peter is because they disagree with their political beliefs. Yes, that's the main. Yeah, you got it. That's the claim. Yeah. Now proceed. What's what's a good way to test that claim? So we have a two by two box. There are there's like good SC uh, that is anti woke. There's bad SC that's anti woke. There's bad SC that's just however that that two by two goes we need to see content from peter in all four of those boxes and see if if people are consistent on the you know if it's good se and anti-woke or good se and it has nothing to do with anti-woke if they're consistent on their criticisms against those two sets of uh, content I yeah. Oh, actually, I just thought of a, a actual test we could really do, and that is take take a ten uh, SE content creators, but take their face off, take their voice off, and just read the transcripts, and we'll we'll smuggle in Peter's transcript in the ten, and and get the SE community to see if they can figure out which one's Peter's, and preferably we'll we'll choose um, um, people who haven't watched a lot of Peter's videos or other, you know, people who are familiar with SE, but haven't actually watched a lot of content. And if you can actually spot Peter's transcript, because it's low quality SE, okay, then you got my attention. Well, I, I think this is not, I think Reed's test is way better. Uh, so did you, did you catch that? Fine Creek? Yeah, he's asking for a consistency check. So let's say Peter's talking about Christianity or whatever. And and uh, you, Jan, you watch and go, no, this is bad SE. And so you're consistent. As you, it's, bad, why, why? it's bad here, yeah. it's bad there, it's bad with the woke stuff, it's bad with the religious stuff, it's bad with whatever. And um, then that would, yeah. that would uh, control for the political aspect. Now, I have an even, bet even better test. Any of you want, 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 want to uh, guess what that will be? It's not necessarily better in that it's more accurate, but it's way, 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 way easier. Oh, I'm all ears. I'm getting tired, so just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why? Why don't we just ask the critics? Oh, because I don't believe them. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You no, know, I'm being serious. Like, I think. Um, I think people will say that this is the reason that it's the technique because it makes them look bad to say, I disagree with, I disagree with the politics. There is incentive to say it's about the technique. Mm. Mm. Right? Do you disagree? Well, because you kind of look like a schmuck if you say it's, a, it's about the politics. 
The, yeah, sure, there is some incentive, but like the whole reason people are interested in SE is because they, for the most part, care about the truth, I guess, right? No, where do you get that from? Well, people, it's, about, it's about critical thinking. Are you talking about the general population? No, I'm talking about those people who are part of the SE oh, community. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. No, that, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, no I, yeah, okay. I, I thought you were talking about the general population, people watching, actually watching the yeah. videos. Like Reed said. And it's, that, also people, it's also people who are interested in critical thinking. Yeah, yeah. So then, like, those you're saying You're saying those people don't have blind spots? No, they have blind spots. Don't have biases? Still, yeah, yeah, they still have biases. It's still possible yeah. that they are biased and they, that they have not been able to identify the real reason for why they... Um, for why they believe what they believe, right? The, here we get immediately, it's another, another test. We can simply ask them, would you still be critical of Peter if he was not, um, if he was actually doing good as he? That's another <laughs> great question. Yeah, well, then the, the fundamental question before that is: He doing bad? Se like you got to unwrap that. Yeah, first. but you take them. You take them on their word. They claim that he's not doing good se or that he's not doing se yeah. at all. Like you just that's okay. Yeah, like okay. like that's, that's, when that's did Peter be, when did Peter become anti woke? Read how many years ago? Oh, here's another test we do. You can hear a lot of hints of it from the book, How to Have Impulsive Conversations, so at least 2014, 2015. But, but the uh, How to Create an Atheist. Until... Yeah. Just, just, just so, you, so the audience notices this as well, right? I've been trying really, really hard to talk about what I believe is the reason for criticism of Peter. And uh, you, Pine Creek, have been consistently trying to insert Peter's political beliefs in the conversation, even yeah. though I say those are not relevant. Yeah, and I don't believe that. Do you yeah. need to convince me otherwise? No, I don't. I'm not particularly interested in convincing you. Okay, so if you're not interested I'm, in convincing me otherwise, then I guess the I'm conversation's over. Because, yeah, I'm interested in convincing the audience, right? Ah, oh, you're interested in I convincing don't. the audience. Yeah. Um, I do believe that there are people who uh, are critics of of Peter who do agree with his politics. Um, but I would say the main... But there are also people who are critical of Peter who, like, don't care about, like, think that's not an important topic to be critical about. Sure, they may disagree or agree or whatever, but it's not relevant for their criticism. Why do you want to convince my audience? I think I, I, I deeply care about critical thinking and... Um, and having a good quality conversations. And no, but you're trying to convince my audience about Peter. No, no, it's not about Peter. It's about the reasons. Like I care about um, about SE. I'm um, I'm interested in uh, promoting SE because I think it's a valuable right. tool for critical reflection and good conversations. It's also a tool that I use. To have better conversation with my family and um, in, in, in my I, private. That's all good and well, but this conversation is about Peter, right? Yeah, and I. Why think do you want to convince the audience that what Peter's doing is bad? Yeah, because it's tarnishing your brand. There you go. Yeah, this is what it's all about. So uh, now can we? Um, so now you may feel like you have identified how I'm not agreeing with his political views, but the reason he is tarnishing the brand is not because of political views. It's because he's doing bad as he. Yeah, and that we disagree about, yeah. And, but we don't, we're not, we don't care about that disagreement. Uh, we have some, t we propose yeah. some tests, um, yeah. how we could figure it out. But, um, but again, a lot of these tests are so subjective, like uh, it's, it's a matter of opinion whether Oh, that was good rapport. Well, that was better rapport. I mean, and that, I mean, that went deep. Oh, that SE, SEI is working on a kind of checklist for figuring out if even a conversation is, is SE at all. That's one checklist. And another one is a, uh, is this a good uh, SE conversation? So these are two separate things we're working on. And once they're done, we'll be able to see more objectively, less objectively, if Peter is doing SE or not, or good SE. Can you, um, my, Jan, can you... Question, question for you, Pine Creek. Why yeah. do you care about saying that it is something other than what I'm saying? For the same reason you care about SE, truth-seeking. 
I think that um, people's biases and political, uh, what I call feel sorry forism, is a big deterrent to truth seeking. And that it, yeah, this, that's, this, that's, this, that's this whole thing, right? this whole thing of feeling sorry for trans people can actually cloud your objectivity and judgment to figuring out what's true or not. And so to me, that's really important. And so, yeah. and so I think that Peter is doing a lot of good work in general. I really do. And I think the reason why he's being poo-pooed is because I, I wouldn't use the, the terminology he uses when he call, call, calls people deranged and so forth, even though I agree with the sentiment. Um, I think he's a force for good in the world. I think he is yeah. increasing critical thinking. I think he's actually giving the, your version he's, of he's SC. Getting more eyeballs. He's getting more yes, eyeballs. he's giving he's your getting... version of SC eyeballs, and he's actually helping your brand more than I think you realize. And yet, uh, a lot of people in your community are poo pooing him. And I think it's because he's making a certain people feel bad yeah well and that's that's partly why i'm speaking up right because this i i have a different reason and um it, it might be the case that there are people who have the reasons that you're describing uh, that's not what that's not the, the vibe that i get from the inter my interactions in the se discourse server and and especially not the vibe that i get from those people who are most vocal about their concerns about peter how would you let's say se was to be demolished the brand kaput, gone. You can still it will be yeah, it will be Socratic dialogue or whatever. Yeah, you could still promote theory. critical thinking. Yeah. You could still have great conversations. You could still use the Socratic method. Why yeah, is absolutely. it? Why is there's this, this huge emphasis on this brand called as street epistemology? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm I'm glad you asked that. Um, I think it's um, what's what's been happening. What's really cool about SE is that there is a community, a grassroots community, developing of people who are trying to help each other um, with developing the, the techniques, practicing the, the techniques, and this brand has a serious value. And I would encourage people to uh, follow the navigating beliefs course. And you know, it would be incomplete to um, to leave out the um the the source of se right it, it 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 originated from the peter's books and it will be incomplete to leave that out um so it's important to protect this brand because it's it's something it's something very valuable it's something very beautiful in this world and it will be a sh it, it will be really uh, yeah it, it will not be beautiful if if this if this was somehow like um, I, I like don't get me wrong i I love SC as well. I love a lot of people in the community. Uh, SC is probably the reason why my uh, subscriber count went from like 15 to like 500 uh, when I first started my YouTube channel. Um, but I mean, it, it's very replaceable. My dog agrees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Um... It's well, ho hopefully this whole issue is just going to resolve itself when we see Peter doing good SE and it's not a bad thing for the brand. That's my goal. You know, he's actually on, on a plane here to Los Angeles right now. We're going to be doing more, actually more just podcast stuff, but later we're going to a Taiwan. So I'm working to, to make the best SE content for myself, for Peter. I just hope it all gets all worked out. I, uh, we got to end this soon because um, I got to go pick up my son. Plus, it's four minutes left on this thing. But um, I'm just curious: how big would you say the SE community is? Like, how you define it, Jan? Oh, that's really hard to tell. I haven't looked at the numbers. I, I, there is thousands of people in the SE Discord server, I believe. Um, uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of people. Um, like how many um, like really active though um, we're talking I, I, hundreds hard, it's, tens it, it's hard to tell i don't know i think there's a lot of people who are not necessarily active in the discord server but who have encountered se uh, and are using it in in, in their family like that's where it's not in the videos where se is used the most right it's a, people who do it with their family people who do it with their friends and their loved ones and that's where it really 
matters, right? And I've had myself um, uh, people who I introduced the terminology street epistemology to who replied to me like, hey, I'm looking this up on Wikipedia and it's originated from a book, a manual for creating atheists. This is some biased, this is some biased methodology. That, that book title is already, that's already a, a reason for people to be suspicious when I'm using the brand. And this, this is really like, and fortunately enough, they were they were open enough to continue reading the Wikipedia page and and see that there are more branches of SE going on, and they were open to continue talking about uh, about street epistemology. But it's a re it's having a real effect on people's perception, and I think that's I think that's that's that makes me sad, honestly, because it's such a beautiful tool to have better conversations. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a wonderful tool. I've used it a lot. Um, Reed, what percentage of uh, the SE community do you think is woke? <laughs> um, Based on Peter's definition. <laughs> I don't know. Over half? 10, 15, 10, 15% to like, you know, actually woke. You know, okay. And how what percentage uh, would be uh, conservative? Two. Five, five percent. I don't know. Hard yeah. to say. I'm wondering where you get those numbers from, Reed, because I don't not aware aware of any polling data. So, because um, that would change my mind, Jan. Yeah, I, my my guess will be that the SE community is much more conservative than um, than than than. Well, I'm talking just, about right now the board, the the people who actually care about this stuff deeply yeah we can, um, we, can we can we can do a poll right we we, yeah. we have to set up more if 80 percent of them are conservative yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I, th I think since most people come to se from a religious background and religious people are more often conservative than progressive um i would i would assume that you know maybe conservatism is a little bit more prevalent than uh, you're guessing here so but th that's i hope so you know, yeah. yeah i don't complain i don't conflate woke with progressive there's some distinction there. So the, yeah. the vast majority of SE community is-, is Yeah, I, was, I wasn't trying to progressive. play progressive either. That's, hey guys, we gotta wrap this up. Uh, thanks for coming on, Jan. Thanks, Reed. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. And uh, thanks for the great discussion. And uh, it was beautiful. Okay, see ya. See ya. Later. Uh, let's see here. I wanna quickly do something. No, that didn't work. Ooh, that perfect timing though. Sorry, my liberal friend, the guy who wanted in. Um, I always have great conversations with you. I got a little time here before I have to go, so I'll uh, focus on the chat, and then we'll wrap it up. How do I summarize that? What just happened? I don't know. <laughs> um, the phrase tarnish the brand came up several times. Maybe that's a good way to summarize what this is all about. SE splitting into dominations. Have the correct SE. Yeah, I'm I'm a little against that. But I've always been a little um maybe too much anti tribal. If you agree there are people who think Peter has had bad SE that agree with his views why is it so important to you to claim others criticize him only because of his politics uh because i think it's more dangerous i mean um and i j the same complaints that people have against peter about being a hypocrite not doing what is he wrote in his books and so forth um i see some of that same hi hypocrisy that it's if it's not about the technique and it is about the politics then that i think is hypocritical and this is why I think a lot of people will push back against me and say, no, it's not about the politics, not about the politics. But even with Jan, this is my opinion, I, I get a sense that it's about this feel sorry for them, this empathy, this you have to, you can't dehumanize people. And, and of course, 
I agree with that in principle, but it it can set you up for um, not being objective. It's it's the same idea of um, you can't say anything negative about oppressed minorities, that type of idea. And so when they hear Peter saying things against oppressed minorities, like they're deranged. I mean, how can you be a supporter of SE and say such things? Because SE is about humanizing people and, and really empathizing and caring about their beliefs and understanding them. And I would say my answer to that is the same as the Christians. It's separating the sin from the sinner. You can say that you can care for someone and not dehumanize them and still say, your beliefs are crazy. Your beliefs are nuts. And I've done this. And I actually have gained rapport with people by being that honest. I can look a Christian in the eye and say, hey, frankly, I think what you believe is nuts and crazy. And most Christians have no problem with that. They say, yeah, actually, my own text, my New Testament says it's crazy. So it's foolishness to those who are perishing. So yeah. And they actually respect me more for being open like that than if I was to feign this, oh, really, you believe, a, you believe the cracker becomes the body? Interesting. Like this, this type of niceties and feignness of niceties and civility can actually hurt you. I should write an SC book. <laughs> and who knows there's there's maybe some trans people who appreciate peter oh, you ever thought about that where peter says you know it is deranged to think that uh kids should be getting puberty blockers this is deranged thinking i've heard peter say stuff like this i bet you there's trans people who say peter's right now if if those people exist, is Peter dehumanizing people? Is he showing a lack of empathy? Is he... No. He's expressing his opinion. And I think the only reason why I don't get as much flack as Peter is, number one, I didn't write books. Never will. And number two, I'm not as popular. But if I were more popular than Peter, I'd be willing to bet money. Like if I had a million subscribers and I'd labeled my stuff as SE, Peter who? No, we're talking about Pine Creek today. Because most people have no clue about Peter's books or care about his books. They care about watching his videos. And like Reed admitted that the top three videos of uh, is when they got combative. Like, you know, that sort of thing sells. Apparently Peter has a big trans donor. Really? I didn't know, know that. Where are my big trans donors? <laughs> Yeah, Nicholas, I've, I've uh, figured that out from you. But it, it boils down to this minutia of, of checking these boxes. You've got to do this. Okay, set up your rapport, and then uh, uh, figure out the claim, and then figure out the reason, and then investigate the reason, use techniques like outside. I mean... This is why SE is boring, because if you go down that strict protocol of, of how to have these better conversations, like the way I do it, it's intuitive. You just do it. You let it flow. You let the spirit lead. You zig, you zag. Sometimes you call the person crazy. Other times you don't. I mean, it's so intuitive of when to ask what question and when to back off, when to push forwards. It comes with experience and, and having some common sense at times.
But it will take a lot of convincing to convince me that politics has nothing to do with this. I think it has most to do with it. But, and I've, I should ask Jan if he thinks it has anything to do with it. I think he would have to admit, yes, it has something to do with it, but it's not the main thing. But I would need to see a ton. Of, my default position right. is that this is mostly about politics until, and so you need evidence to get me off that default. I mean, it's very reasonable to think that a lot of the disagreements and passions of people are politically based. It's not even so much religion. It's politics. This is why people are uncomfortable about talking about politics because it's so deep-seated and, and powerful and passionate. Anyhow, ask me a question. If you want to ask me a question, I'm going to wrap this up. Oh, hang on. Yeah, I'm going to wrap it up right now. Uh, 15 minutes. I'll pick up my son, but I'm going to leave it like in two minutes. Do you have any last minute questions? Yeah, they have the burden of proof, not me. <laughs> I might as well just say I'm doxastically closed. Yeah, convince, forget about me. Convince my audience. Yeah, that's not true. I, I can be changed. I can change my mind. I gave some tests, but they're really hard to do. And I, I don't think self-reporting is good enough. I, just believe me, Doug. It's not about the politics. Yeah, I don't believe you. I need more than just self-reporting. See, I'm consistent. I say that about trans people, too. I need more than just self-reporting. I need some type of MRI test. <laughs> Do you make your son pay for gas since you have to pick him up? I should. I make my daughter pay for gas because she's 20. My son's 17. Why do Adam and Eve have belly buttons? It's just for, yeah, for the paintings. It's just for the symmetry. So we know where the center is. How much percent of income should people give to charity? That's totally up to them. How about you're reporting you're not motivated by... I've never said I'm not... I am motivated by politics. I am motivated by politics. Politics is where rubber hits the road. This is what actually policies, laws, everything. I hate Peter because he does bad SE. I think Peter, when he chooses to do SE, he does great SE. I'll stand by that statement. That's my opinion. I think Peter does better SE than most people. Not me, but most common people. I think uh, Jan is mistaken, Matthew. Although he didn't, he actually, I'll take that back. I, I would say most of most people, it's about the politics. Jan could be the exception. Why is our bottom in the middle? <laughs> Do 
Do you think Peter's guests reflect as deeply as your guests? Uh, Nicholas, Peter does not do what I do online. Like, to actually have people come on. I think he's had one live stream, maybe two. And then it's just general Q&A. So to compare me and him, you would have to compare my in real life with his in real life. But if you were to compare them, I would say yes. I would say yes, his guests do reflect as much as mine do, my guests reflect. Which is sometimes not that much, but still reflection, still better than nothing, right? Poof. Poof. Get out of here, Doug. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, what is Thursday? Am I, uh, I might be around tomorrow weekend. Who knows? Have a great day.